that I was I had to listen to on video <laughs> about um, the, the choices in education, and I thought that this was phenomenal. So I just want to give our audience some kind of idea of what we talked about. And you did a lot of research there uh, about it. And the first question I want to ask is, what percentage of kids go to government schools? About 95%. So about 95%. Does that qualify as a monopoly because everybody has to pay or... I mean, because I guess some people don't have to pay, like preachers that live in parsonages, they don't have to pay taxes on their houses. So what, 99% of people, 99 plus percent of people have to pay for public schools, and then 96, 95% of kids go to school, public school? It's a monopoly. Let me put it this way. If you're a businessman in an industry and you have 30% concentration, there's the Department of Justice has a whole office called the Antitrust Division. They use something called the Herfindahl Index, well, but it measures concentration. If you get over 25, 30 percent, you're a monopoly as far as they're concerned. Wow. They're monopolistic. So, yes, this is a monopoly. Apparently, they don't speak Latin. Do they know what mono means? Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, these are the people worrying about our education, I suppose. So when you're talking about 95 percent of kids going to government schools, oftentimes monopolies have a couple of character traits, right? Like they're, uh, they provide poor customer service. Right. Gen generally, the costs are significantly higher in monopolies. Right. It's the whole point of having monopolies. It's why business guys fight to get monopolies, because once you have a monopoly – and there's other words. There's, you know, oligopoly, and there, there's things that even if it isn't – even if it is only 25, 30 percent, once the market gets this concentrated, let alone 95 percent, firms start behaving a certain way. They start providing low quality goods and mark jacking up the price and, you know, and knowing that you don't have an option. Certainly, if a company has 95 percent market share, you can count on it to do that. Well, that's why the Justice Department has a division to stop it. And uh, so nothing changes about, so those are the features of monopoly. They give lousy, not just service, but lousy quality goods, and they charge high prices. Nothing changes if just because a monopoly has a government you know, return address on it. It's the nature of monopoly to give inferior products at a high price and extract the difference. And when you're talking about companies that sort of corner the market, uh, you know, m we're using monopoly here uh, in, in that way. But um, it's for companies that corner the market, they also kind of go about this prevent defense kind of thing. In college football, they um, once you run the score up high enough, they used to call it uh, the prevent defense because you didn't want the, the score to be too high. It was unsportsmanlike. Right. So you didn't keep on playing offense. You turned over to a prevent defense and uh, started right. uh, preventing, just trying to prevent uh, the scoring from happening. So at that point, um, companies, any any organization, kind of goes into a prevent defense defense phase, and they're trying to prevent people from sort of rising up, competing as opposed to really anything else. Like the taxi cab unions going after Uber, for instance. Right. The taxi cab unions aren't trying to get more people to take taxi cab rides. They're trying to stop other people from being able to get uh, medallions. Right. It's a, a big tool of it is called regulation. You know, regulation, folks on Wall Street, for example, scream about regulation, but the truth is they love regulation because the regulation forecloses new entrants into the field. It's, it's really been a longstanding feature from the first days of regulation that that happens. They, the regulators get captured by the people they're supposed to be looking at, and then they do all these things to prevent new competition entering the field. And it's just like the taxi and limo commissions are doing to Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually was just with a, a limousine driver in, uh, in Vegas the other day, and we were talking about how he got his license and how he had to jump through all these hoops to all these petty bureaucrats. And he ended up saying, I had to pay him off every single one. I had to pay off all along the way. And that's kind of the function of a taxi and limousine commission. It's just a way of ex they get a monopoly and they're extracting rent out of it. So there's all this pro – so anyway, regulation in general is often, although the industry's, you know, kvetch about being regulated, often the real function of the regulator is to prevent – new people from coming in and competing with them. And they Many times that. these regulatory bodies are staffed by people who are sort of from the higher-ups of those industries, you know, the companies. Sometimes it'll even be people who are currently, um, you know, working in and, uh, you know, higher e echelons of the companies that uh, that are being regulated. Right. It's a long time. Milton Friedman described it. It's actually his friend Stigler, uh, George Stigler, described it in 72. But Milton Friedman described it in Free to Choose that he, the first regulator in the world was the Interstate <laughs> Commerce Commission. Okay. And they regulated there, I think it was the 1870s. There were a lot of do-gooders out there saying, oh, we need to regulate the railroads. The railroads are, uh, you know, going to... Robber barons. Robber barons. And so this, 
And the railroad industry, and in fact, the general counsel of the industry wrote this letter that's quoted in Free to Choose, where he says the wisest course is not to fight this, but to let it happen. And so the public thinks that we're being sort of looked after. And then we'll just infiltrate our people into it and we'll get control of it, Mm. which is just, and what really happens is you go to work. And so they did, and, and when they took over the trucking industry in the early 30s, they did the same thing. They set they set rates artificially high. They set the tariffs. You know, the go- when, even when I was a kid, trucking industry all over America was set. You know, the government set. You know, how how much it cost to truck something from Chicago to Dallas. It was crazy. It was like the Soviet Union, and they set those rates artificially high so all the companies in the industry made bank. And then they prevented. They refused to give new licenses to new people to enter and compete. That's how they regulated, and they learn, and this happens all the time with regulators. You learn if you're a good boy. If you go to work there after law school, you're a good boy. You work 10, 15 years, and that's how you regulate, in scare quotes. Then when you leave, there'll be nice jobs for you, you know, million-dollar-year jobs for you on, on with Wall Street law firms, or there'll be good jobs for you in the trucking industry. Or the, but if you're a bad boy and you go in and actually, you know, you think your job is is actually to protect the public. There aren't any of those jobs. There aren't any, when you leave that regulator, there aren't any board seats waiting for you. And so that's how they capture the regulators. And it's, of course, I mean, I was writing about this 11 years ago regarding Wall Street, and everybody thought it was some sort of crazy conspiracy theory. I think it's now, you know, they, I've gotten tired. I, I don't even count the stories anymore about high level SEC guys who leave and take, you know, a million eight. One guy left and took a million eight dollar salary at a law firm that was defending the people he had just been chasing. So tell me there isn't some quid pro quo. Oh, God. <laughs> that is frightening. Patrick, I, I believe I have you for the, the full hour, right? I'm yours. Excellent. And the frightening part is it's all legal. Of course it is. <laughs> that is frightening. I want to talk to you more about uh, the, edu- the situation of education in this country. If you have uh, any questions for Patrick Byrne, the number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Warning, if you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station because there's an alternative to bankruptcy and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! 
the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. The live Saturday edition continues here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Perhaps you have a question for Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock.com. Uh, we'll continue with him here in a moment. I want to let you know about ProXPN first. got to protect yourself when you're online. You can't expect someone else to do it for you. At least when I say someone else, I mean your internet service provider. They're probably one of the ones who are invading your privacy. They're likely logging all of the websites you visit, the search terms that you enter, maybe selling that information, handing it over to the government for who knows what purpose. Perhaps there's somebody at that coffee shop you're sitting at with your laptop or your smartphone. Maybe they're sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets to try to acquire personal identifying information, passwords, that sort of thing. If you encrypt your internet connection with ProXPN, then that solves those problems of prying and spying. It's a great level of security that you can add to your life for less than five bucks a month when you use our discount code. So here's how you get started. You go to proxpn.com slash FTL, download their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS, Android, and even Linux. Get started with the software. It's free to get rolling. And then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you use code FTL50, FTL like Free Talk Live 50, as in 50% off the price of their annual account. So that's how you get a, an amazing deal on this. And with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So really, the only thing you have to lose here, if you delay, is your privacy. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and get started right now. And when you're ready to upgrade to premium, use code FTL50, which, by the way, you continue getting that 50% off when you're ready to renew after your first year. So they lock in that discount on your account. ProXPN.com slash FTL, code FTL50. As we bring back Patrick uh, Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com, who has more than a few opinions about education and the you know sort of government monopoly on it here in the United States. It it was the thrust of your keynote speech this year at the Liberty Forum, which is the yearly convention that is thrown by the Free State Project. Now, Patrick, I recall you had attended the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Was this your first or your second Liberty Forum? Uh, I think it was my first Liberty Forum and my first Pork Fest. Yeah. Okay. So you did Pork Fest in 2014, which is the uh, right. the outdoor camping festival, and then right. this year it's was the, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Thank you, right. Mark. Uh, and then this year was the, your first Liberty Forum. Just you know, before we go on with the education questions, uh, what was your impression of the event this year, the Liberty uh, Forum? Oh, I love it. You know, it's really you know an intellectual crowd. It's people who are. It's just nice. Being with people who have principles and you know what the principles are and you can negotiate and or navigate based on, you know, 
who people are. Gosh, there's whole corners of this world you go to that you don't you don't know who has principles and who doesn't. Yeah, it is refreshing to be around people who get it when it comes to freedom, and it's nice to uh, it's nice to be around those folks all the time. And that's why we moved here from Florida as part of the Free State Project. So, Mark, uh, you've got more questions for Patrick about uh, education. Yeah, I think that. Um you know, one of the things when we talk about government school is probably the first thing that comes to people's mind is how much it costs. Um, and you know what's funny about that? If for all the talk out there, and shoot, there's whole websites from the establishment saying we need to spend more. Yeah. And blah blah blah. blah. You try to find out how much it actually. How much are we spending? I mean, before you decide, do we spend more or not? Let's find out how much we are spending. You, you it takes a little bit of digging to hunt the actual numbers down. Yeah, oftentimes when you're dealing, we were just talking about uh, you know uh, monopolies and or organizations that have sort of cornered the market in some area, and I think it's inarguable that uh, government schools have cornered the market in that way. Now they compete against themselves geographically, but in order to go to a different government school, many times you have to move your house, and uh, that's a pretty you know that's a pretty tall order. Right, and we basically assign kids by zip codes. You know, what sense does that make? We don't assign people to university by zip code. We've we created vouchers. People coming back from World War II got these vouchers called the GI Bill, and there's now Pell Grants and other things. Those are basically vouchers. And you go to the university you want, and it will let you in. And guess what? Our university system turned into the envy of the world over a few decades. But for some reason, K through 12, we still assign them by, you know, their street address. It's like, how crazy would it be to assign people to universities by their street address? Well, it wouldn't be crazy. It'd be socialist or totalitarian, perhaps. Um, you know, the idea is, is it's basically just put together around school buses. How much do they pay? Um, how much do we pay per student uh, for government school? It's sixteen thousand dollars per year per student in America. There's fifty million kids. We're spending eight hundred billion. If you take the federal, state local level. It's, and this is all from federal uh, you know, data, and I backed it all up in citations in the speech. Uh, it's, so it comes to $16,000 per student. Now, they hide uh, money in different places. Like a lot of people say, well, it's not that much where I live. Because- is that a record high? I'm sorry to interrupt. Is that, is that a record? Do you know? Yes, it goes up about 4 to 6 percent a year. This crowd has been following this now for about 15 years, and it just goes up. So the educational quality must be going up uh, 4 to 6 percent a year, right? Kids are getting smarter, aren't they? Hardly. It goes down. We're now out of 30 OECD countries, which is to say there are about 30 uh, industrialized countries in the world. We rank about 25th, 26th now, or 16-year-olds do. We actually do pretty well. Uh, when they're very young, we rank higher, and then the older they get, the dumber they get. When or when are not dumber, but I think, you know, yeah, lower well, achievement. They the get. less interested, I think, is is what it is. They, the less interested they are in the system yep. of education, because you know, you start with the wide-eyed, excited to I learn. I used to love school. Yeah, young person, <laughs> elementary schooler getting in, and then you know, over the years, the the love of learning just gets punished and beaten out of them. I don't well, know what it is that uh, that does. It, but I, it seems to be near universal for uh, government school students and even private schools. I think that the, the that sort of institutional conversation reaches out even farther than that. Well, I know what it is. There's no competition. There's no it's a seller's market. You don't really get any choice, and you know, so you're served like in the Soviet Union. You get, you know, you get X, and you get a certain number of, you know, you got some government mandarin somewhere deciding how many green trousers and blue trousers to make. It isn't based on the choices of the people, and so you get this, you know, you get slop as served to you. It's just the, again, the nature of monopoly. How do government schools do against private schools in similar geographic areas? Well, it's it's not always so clear cut, but I can tell you, people in voucher programs who take part in school choice programs do amazingly well. There's the the data is in the debate is over on that. There have been 12 studies published in peer-reviewed academic journals, so we can trust them. Haha. <laughs> but I mean, we can, as if we can trust everything They're at least published peer-reviewed. in academic. <laughs> no, I can try. I, I trust th- these articles. 12 of them, professors uh, Patrick Wolf in Arkansas. A wonderful woman out at St- uh, Hoover at Stanford, was at Harvard, uh, I'm blocking on her name for a second. Um, and they show incontrovertibly to a 95% confidence level, I think 10 out of 12 or 11 out of 12, showed a 95% confidence level. People who take part in vouchers have 
uh, achieve significantly better. So it used to be that when in the early days of vouchers and school choice, people would say, oh, well, yeah, but the students whose parents want them to go and get vouchers, they're more motivated and so forth, so that doesn't tell you anything. So, But that those days are over because for 15 years there have been – um, every time a voucher position opens up, a scholarship opens up, about eight kids apply for it. So now you can control for that. You can do what's the gold standard in social research. That it's you know eight kids applied for the slot, seven didn't get it, one did. Now let's look how the one did versus Patrick, the seven. Patrick, hold that thought for us. We're going to come back with more. Eight fifty five four fifty freeze the toll free number. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 877-345-7645. That's 877 877-345- 7645. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately at 1 877 345 7645. That's 1 877 345 7645. 1 877 345 7645. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project. I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows, and if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, you can bring up anything, but you're going to have to wait to do that until we're done talking with Patrick Byrne. If you would like, however, to talk to Patrick, uh, you are welcome to call in at 855-450-FREE. The discussion we're having with him is all about education. He's done a lot of research on the topic, and so if you've got any questions in that realm, you're welcome to jump into the discussion. Uh, 855-450-FREE is the number. We can also take Skype, because Patrick is not on Skype, so therefore Skype is available at Skype username lrn.fm. Dr. Patrick Byrne is also the CEO of Overstock.com. And Overstock.com is one of the largest companies in the world to accept Bitcoin for purchases directly. They You go right there and you can purchase right on the website at Overstock.com and buy whatever you need with Bitcoins. Now, if you don't have any Bitcoins, you can go to ExpressCoin.com. They've got all kinds of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dashcoin, Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, so you can do business with them whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. Um, they make it easy for you. You just go to uh, start off at ExpressCoin.com. You can do it with a money order or a check. Um, ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone with their app. Use the coupon code FTL, that's FTL as in Free Talk Live, and you can get up to $40 worth of the cryptocurrency of your choice, Bitcoin or whatever it might be, um, with no fee at all. So it's ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. All right, let's bring Patrick back on the line here. And I do, when you know, when we're kind of done with the educational topic, and I know you may have some more questions, Mark, plus we've got a call on the line for Patrick. But I do want to come back and uh, and ask Patrick to kind of give us a, a one-year retrospective a little bit later on on uh, you know his experience over at Overstock accepting Bitcoin, sort of looking back. Because I know it's, I think it's been, what, like a year and two months or something like that, Patrick? Exactly, yeah. It was yeah. January 9th last year. All right, so uh, we'll come back to that uh, discussion okay. here. But, Mark, before we go on here, do you have a, another question you want to throw out before we get to our call or should we just jump right into uh well uh, yeah let's take the caller all right let's go to carl he is on the line and i I, you know what i didn't ask carl where he was carl where are you at tonight carl i'm from i'm cleveland hey there welcome you're on with patrick byrne yeah can you hear me yep go ahead yeah thanks um my question for dr byrne was um i i just want to take a step back and ask him what he feels as though, you know, the general, you know, the ultimate purpose of education is. Now, the reason why I ask is, you know, is it, um, you know, is it job training? Are we, you know, is education trying to give people skills, you know, for jobs? Or is it like a general skill base? And the reason why I ask that is that um, I feel as though a lot of education has become, you know, completely impractical. And becomes like just you know a hodgepodge of trivia. So completely, what did you call it, sir? Completely impractical. I'm sorry, say again. He said impractical. You said impractical. impractical. Okay, thanks. Sorry, there was you cut out a moment. <clears throat> well, sir, I think. Uh, uh, well, my, my first, my my thinks, my thoughts on what the ultimate uh, purpose of education is. If I were to take a sort of a civilizational perspective, it's to increase human capital. It's to pass on human capital so each new generation doesn't have to start from scratch learning. So to me, the most effective mechanism is the one that, that does that. However, I think the real way to respond is the purpose of education is what each individual wants the purpose of their education to be. And for a lot of people, that is going to be acquire a skill set that lets them get a good job, get ahead, give their children a better life than they got, et cetera. For some people, it isn't. Some, hey, I, I did a doctorate in philosophy. Uh, you know, I wanted to sort of understand man's place in the universe. I didn't anticipate it was going to have a whole lot of, you know, it was going to increase my you know, employability. But I did it because I was curious. And there's some people who want to do that. My, my, my concern for society, to your point that a lot of the education is impractical, I think there are. Uh, I think there's a lot of higher education going on in universities that people are taking up, taking out, you know, huge amounts of debt for trillion dollars of student loan debt that they don't understand. There's not going to be uh, the payback that they anticipated or, the, or that there was in my generation. If you're studying, you know, I don't want to disparage any particular field, but there are some some fields that. Well, you, you can probably figure, you can probably take a guess what I'm talking about. There are just some some people call them grudge studies, 
And people get out of the grudge studies, I'm not sure they've actually acquired any skills. And I'm not talking about knowing how to turn widgets, but even how to, uh, uh, how to, I don't know, they, they don't seem terribly, well, there's a reason in, our, in my generation, kids got out of college, and for every graduate, it seemed there were four or five job offers. It was not, everyone got a job offer. Now, it's like kids get out of college, and about one out of every four or five of them seem to have a job. And it's very normal to spend your 20s living in your parents' home and stuff. Nothing wrong with that if that's the life you choose. But if, it's, if you're doing that because you went to college thinking you were getting one thing, something that was going to actually give you skills and make you employable, and it's, instead you got to study uh, you know, other things and, and learn what seems to be, in my experience, more some people being trained what to think than how to think. Then, then you're not really that employable, and you should know that before you accumulate that two hundred thousand dollars of student debt. Carl, any other thoughts? Um, uh, no, I mean, uh, he, uh, I mean that was a, a, a great answer. Um, Very good. Uh, I think you were talking about um, the disillusionment of a lot of students, and I think a lot of it has to do with. Um, People don't really, they sit in class, you know, and I, I'm a college graduate as well. You know, I mean, so I've been through it, but I, I think it just seems like a lot of make work. You know, I mean, just a bunch of teachers standing in front of you and just taking up a lot of yeah, years I think and that's, years that's of true. your life. I definitely saw that in college uh, as well. Thank you, Carl, for the call tonight. I appreciate it. And I'll uh, add one more thing on yeah. for Carl. Uh, Milton Friedman used to say the industry that had the least innovation that you could think of was... Uh, education, that if somebody came from 200 years ago and saw a picture of a classroom today, they would know just what they were looking at. Very few other jobs have that feature. However, the revolution in online education, and there's all kinds of revolutions actually going on in education that could well change that. And if, if they're not going to tend to their business model, if they're not going to disrupt their own business model, someone else is going to, it seems to be doing it for them. Very good. Um, actually, my son is, is a so, sort of homeschooled, sort of unschooled, and uh, you know we do most of our education over the internet because, well, that's where all the information is. If you wanted to study something today as an adult, it's unlikely you're going to go back to university to do it. It's more, much more likely you're going to spend uh, time researching it on the internet, and hey, that's go to Udemy. Udemy. There's a uh, Udemy.com. You can, you know, you don't get, get certificates of attendance with it, but you can get, get all kinds of can private, buy all kinds of private skill education uh, in a place in that online university. So we were talking about the cost of education per student, and I think that this is, uh, in many cases, it's been leveled, right? Like it's leveled that uh, the, the accusation that government schools are basically the worst education in a given geographic area and the highest cost when they're compared to the other forms of education for kids in, in that particular area. Uh, do you find anything to disagree with in that statement? Oh, not at all. Not at all. And also, it's pretty, last time I checked, it's pretty much a myth that, like, the education, it, it, uh, the dollar spent per child in a in poor areas. To be honest, the it was there was a slight difference. The middle class schools had slightly less being spent per child than both uh, wealthy and or high income and low income. Last I checked, which admittedly was five or six years ago. But in any case, it's all very it's all quite close. There's all sorts of ways that the funds get leveled. So it's really not about massive disparities in the amount that's being spent for students. Yeah, I've. I, I, it seems like there's this organization. I don't know what the organization is, but there's a there's a group of people that seem to want to keep us our kids going to the worst school in town and make sure that we all fund it. Right, and in many cases, some of those folks wouldn't let their own children walk across those school campuses. In, in L.A., the East L.A., there's a school that your chances of getting out on time with an average skill set are lower than they are of sometime in your high school career getting mugged, raped, shot, you know, knifed, et cetera. So it, these are dangerous places. They wouldn't let their own kids walk across them, but they say, no, you can't. You, they say to them, you can't leave. All right, Patrick, stand by. We're going to bring you back for uh, one more segment. And if you've got a question for him, he's here with us, 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number, or Skype us at username lrn.fm. More on the way. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live on the live Saturday edition of the program. We'll be opening up the phones for anyone with any topic here in a little bit. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number if you've got a last-minute question for Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock.com. He also has done quite a bit of research on uh, the topic of education, which has been the bulk of what we've discussed tonight. I wanted to get into... Uh, Mark, well, he's the uh, chairman of the board of uh, the Friedman Foundation for Educational Choice. And, excellent. Yeah. Uh, so I want to get into uh, anybody else with uh, with questions here in, in a moment, but I do want to make sure Patrick has a chance to answer my question about uh, one year, just over a year now, Overstock.com has been accepting Bitcoin made big headlines a year ago when this happened. 
uh, because it was the first billion dollar company to begin accepting Bitcoin. And, you know, since then, other companies like Dell Computer and Wikipedia have uh, jumped on board the Bitcoin train. Uh, was it a good decision, Patrick, looking back? Oh, no question. No question. We were the first billion dollar company. Actually, this year we'll do pretty close to two billion, I think. Uh, uh, God willing, the creek don't rise. But uh, we're the first billion-dollar company, hundred, first $100 million, first $10 million company. I think we may have been the first million. I think that there were some coffee shops somewhere that might do a million dollars of business who had just started taking it. So we save, We like to think that we save them about four or five years at the rate they're growing, about four or five years in the revolution. Uh, and, yeah, it was worth it. We didn't have as much. I thought that we might have 6 to $8 million in sales anyway. And for moments I dreamed of for little while, I dreamed it might be over 10, but actually it ended up being about $3 million. And the reason is it's not used internationally and, and even domestically. What's happening is people are buying it and hoarding it. They're not using it enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I hope That's what I tell folks is, is that if you want Bitcoin to be successful, um, uh, you know, you might see it as a commodity, a, a virtual commodity, but you're going to need to use it. And that means spending the Bitcoins you have, and then go buying some more, like uh, ExpressCoin.com. Well, I know, uh, Patrick, when we talked to you, I think it was at the Porcupine Freedom Festival asking you, you know, how things were going. Uh, you had said that there were a lot, a lot, a lot of new customers uh, that had not ever bought on Overstock before. Did that sort of pan out for the rest of the year as well? To where Absolutely, and that's true. And, yeah, I don't mean to, you know, I'm pleased, and $3 million is $3 million. It's, yep. You know, nice. Uh, but, it, no, it... it uh, uh, we get a lot of new customers out of it, and we're really the sort of – I've heard that we've become kind of part of the Bitcoin culture in the yeah. sense of when people first get their mom on Bitcoin, they first take it. Go to Yeah, so – oh, I'm very glad I did it. No question I'm glad I did it. I just wish that people made who were behind it. It isn't enough to just buy and hold it. you got to start using it. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I found in, in my household is uh, essentially I don't make the decisions on who buys the, the housewares and things like that generally. But when Overstock switched over, I'm like, I told my wife, essentially, whatever it is we need, go get it at Overstock instead of wherever it is that you go get it because I wanted to sort of reward the company. And so we've um, we've done that. So, uh, you know, just as an observation, then we'll get right back into folks' calls. Uh, you know, obviously there's, uh, God, what is it, Gresham's Law that says that people are going to hold on to the good money and spend the bad money. Right. So, so there's a real incentive to hold Bitcoin because it's better money than the U.S. dollar uh, from so many different aspects. So, you know, a suggestion, of course, is that people would be more likely to spend Bitcoin if they were incentivized to do so. And maybe one way that uh, that major companies could incentivize people is to sort of, you know, give people like 2% or 3% off or whatever the credit card fee, you know, would normally be to say, oh, you know, here's a reason to use Bitcoin beyond just the fact that it's cool and neat and, and new that, you know, you actually get a, a discount uh, for it. That's just, just a suggestion. You know, no, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. You know, we actually do give 4% of all Bitcoin sales we give to various foundations that promote that's Bitcoin. Great. Maybe we should shift it to giving it to, you know, 2% to them and 2% to customers. Yeah, the only question, the only concern I guess I would have about that would be, would the credit card companies claim you're violating their, uh, their terms of service? Because I know sometimes they say that, you know, like uh, to gas stations, that they can't give a cash price if they accept credit cards uh, and give somebody a break on a cash well, price. So. We can give rewards. We can always give rewards. And okay. we have a good rewards program. So we could do that. We could. I'll, I'll give that some thought. There that, you go. This was worth the hour for me. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll take that as a compliment. Let's go on uh, with some folks uh, with questions here for you. Richard's in Austin, Texas. Richard, you're on with Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I had a quick question for you. Over the years, I've listened to a, a lady by the name of Charlotte Thompson Eichelby. She was the former head of the education department during the Reagan administration. Carol, uh, uh, yes, yes. That's who, is that who I was referring to, the woman out at Hoover now? Hoxby? Uh -huh. Carol? Carolyn Hoxby? No, uh, Charlene Thompson Iserby. Iserby. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, no, I don't know her. Yeah, yeah, she wrote a very detailed book. They say it's, I haven't seen the actual book, but they say it's about as fat as a phone book. And it, she details how the Carnegie, Carnegie Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and a bunch of other foundations got together and put millions of dollars behind what she determined as to be the deliberate dumbing down of America, which meant they basically systematically wanted to turn the school systems into just basically 
turnstile type, you know, keep graduating the students and moving them on out to society, but never giving them any real skills, never really giving them any ways of really mm-hmm. learning the uh, lesson plans. Yeah, they want to turn them into worker drones uh, effectively. Thanks, Richard, for the call. Your comments, Patrick. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Great point. Uh, Yeah, I don't think that, unfortunately, uh, you can't you can't dummy people down and make them good workers today. Mm. Uh, maybe you could 100 years ago. Absolutely, the history of the government school system is embedded in something called the Know Nothing Movement, which was an anti-immigrant, anti-Catholic, anti-Jewish movement that uh, it basically saw these, you know, these sort of lower-class people washing up from the shores of Europe, and they're not really American, and we have to indoctrinate them. So they started off largely as a system of social indoctrination, They've kept that function, not, uh, and they're absolutely, uh, they're absolutely a key part of the group of the strategy of groupism and statism. You need this mechanism to continuously induct, uh, you know, new entrants into the game, and that's why you have this f- strange phenomenon. And that is, even though it is so documentable, what the government school system does by way of harm to the poor. Uh, the, the poorest people in our society, they uh, they will not budge in their opposition. As Milton Friedman used to say, uh, the Democratic Party, and I'm I'm a small R Republican. I'm not a member of the Republican Party, but if they, so, I'm not. I'm an equal opportunity abuser here. <laughs> but if the Democratic Party always holds itself out as the champion of the poor and the underprivileged, but on the one issue that would matter the most. The poor people and and uh, minorities and such, it would be getting school choice on that one issue. They're on absolutely the wrong side. It's the civil rights issue of the 21st century, in my mind. This is like dealing with people who are like pre 19 you know 60s who are against civil rights. Uh, dealing with people who are against school choice, it is the civil rights issue of our of our era. You know, oftentimes you'll find people attempting to say that you're anti-education, you're anti-intelligence, you're anti-logic, if for some reason you're against the government school system the way it has been for about 100 years. Um, And it's just, it's so frustrating. There are a myriad of ways to make it more efficient, even somewhat more efficient. I would say the free market is the best uh, is the best option. But you know, even if you just go to something like vouchers or a variety of other options, you're going to see leaps and bounds in education. But they don't want to do that. They want to see America continue to slide down the scales. And I think that's probably the question they're going to have: is why do other countries have socialist indoctrination centers and they continue to do better than the United States? Well, for one thing, you'd be surprised how how some other places like Sweden actually do have a voucher system, and how it works. But uh, yeah, it, it, put it this way: for it's been documented there's, that for every year in a voucher program, black kids advance two years. There's basically by the time they get out of high school, a four-year educational gap in achievement. But if you put them in voucher programs, uh, they close two years for every year in the program. You put them in for two or three years, they've caught up. So that means that this entire uh, underperformance in in black educational achievement is completely man-made. It's completely a function of the current government. And and it's, to me, the people who are, you know, Bush called it the soft bigotry of low expectations. The people who who don't understand this is not how it has to be. This can totally be fixed. There's a program in D.C. that has like a 93 percent parental, uh, you know, satisfaction rate, far high. The kids go on to college. It, you know, it can work. We can solve these issues overnight. But the party that holds itself out as the champion of the poor and the minorities is dead set against it. Patrick, question for you. I know that Mark booked you only for an hour here. Uh, I'll we stay do, on. We sure. do have a couple more people with questions for you, so I wanted to see if you'd hang for a uh, little bit. I'll hang as long as you have questions. All right, cool. I'll love oh, to hear I. from more people. So if you are, <laughs> you don't know what you just said. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not guaranteeing these questions. Isn't it true that Overstock tortures bunnies on Easter? <laughs> oh, we found out. <laughs> Stand by, Patrick. We're going to bring you back here. In hour number two on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live, if you are on hold, do hang because Patrick is hanging for you. Uh, our number here, 855-450-FREE. We will continue here in moments with Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. 
New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,202 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $254. Antiwar.com reports continuing his angry railing at the Iran nuclear framework deal, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu demanded more sanctions against Iran to force them to agree to another better deal. Beyond that, Netanyahu demanded that any final deal with Iran on the nation's civilian nuclear program require Iran to publicly and in a clear and unambiguous way endorse Israel's present status. Iran obviously isn't going to do that, both because of their support for Palestinian statehood and the fact that the nuclear deal has nothing to do with Israel's status as a Jewish-dominated state. The Palestinian question is hugely controversial across the Middle East, and few states in the region would be willing to offer the sort of unqualified endorsement Netanyahu is seeking. Since Israel has threatened Iran on a weekly basis for decades, they are even less inclined towards public support for Israel. That Netanyahu even brought up such a silly demand at this stage reflects both his desire to sabotage the talks by imposing unacceptable demands and an effort to tie the Israeli occupation of Palestine into the situation in hopes of getting the U.S. and other nations back to their usual passivity over that occupation as a tacit condition for getting the Israeli premier to stop griping about Iran. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Private Manning, the former soldier convicted of giving classified military documents to WikiLeaks, joined Twitter on Friday. Manning mostly used the social media platform to thank supporters and explain the ability to tweet from prison. Private Manning is currently serving a 35-year sentence at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas for violating the Espionage Act. One of Manning's first tweets said, I'm hoping to stay connected with this account as much as possible, but would rather tweet about more meaningful things than not. Hashtag less is more. Manning has to dictate the tweets over the phone to Fitzgibbon Media, who is managing the Twitter account. Manning also wrote, It will be hard, but I don't want this Twitter feed to be a one-way street slash conversation. Manning also tweeted, Thank you for all your love and support. I hope you will continue to follow me in the future. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports seven San Francisco police officers linked to a scandal over racist and homophobic text messages were suspended with the recommendation they be fired. Chief Greg Sir said on Friday, in all, a department investigation revealed wrongdoing by 14 members of the police department who may be disciplined in various ways from suspension without pay to termination. Sir said in a statement, there is no place in the SFPD for any officer capable of the thinking expressed in these hateful text messages. Messages. Adding, the officers responsible for the reprehensible text should be separated from the SFPD as soon as practical. The fine right-minded men and women of the SFPD that are of the impeccable character required of a guardian expect no less. The offensive text came to light during an FBI investigation of corruption involving Ian Furminger, a former San Francisco police sergeant. Court documents in the Furminger case said that four officers used their phones to text offensive messages. In the text, Furminger used racial epithets, bragged that a relative was a slave auctioneer, and joked about the KKK. Sir said the police department launched an extensive investigation and found eight officers showed such extreme bias, racist and or homophobic content, and such despicable thinking that they were suspended and their cases have been forwarded to the police commissioner with the singular recommendation of termination. The eighth officer involved has already resigned. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new report by the Department of Health and Human Services has found that the average male is 4,000% less effective in fights than he imagines, casting powerful doubts on many men's claims that they could take someone out in two seconds or smash a guy's face in with their fist. On average, men describing hypothetical fights overestimated their level of combat skill by a factor of 40, with 80% of males incorrectly predicting they could mess a guy up real bad with one solid punch to the jaw. During actual physical altercations, However, these men were statistically more likely to end up hurting themselves, or, most commonly, trying to diffuse the tension by nervously saying, hey man, let's all just calm down, okay, before any fighting even came to pass. Researchers discovered that men were significantly weaker than they verbally indicated while chatting with friends in bars and locker rooms, and that men who were 90% sure they could tear someone a new asshole tended to succeed in fewer than 1 in 10 fights. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. You can dial in toll-free. This hour, we will at some point switch over to where you can call in about anything you want, but right now we're actually going into overtime with our special guest from the first hour, Patrick Byrne, who we've had on the program in the past a couple times. Uh, he's the CEO of Overstock.com and the chairman of the Friedman Foundation for Educational Choice. And education has been the bulk of the conversation that we've been having with Patrick, and I think that's uh, likely the thrust of the questions that we have for him, uh, with the folks who have waited patiently through the news break, as has Patrick. Welcome back, sir. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for extending my time. Yeah, well, let's jump uh, right back into it here. We've got Gary on the line in Myrtle Beach listening to WRNN-FM. Hello, Gary. You're on with Patrick. Hey, Howard. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Gary. Uh, just just want to say you guys are dead on. Uh, the monopoly on our education system is is one of the biggest reasons behind it is a politically charged government employee union that d they do not care about the student. All they're teaching our kids is how to pass a test, and the ones that don't do well are getting pushed through the system so they don't have a high fail rate and they look good. That's all they're concerned about. They're not concerned about teaching our kids anything. And these government unions are, who are being paid by the taxpayers are, are more concerned about who is in office and, and, and in charge of uh, political uh, their political agenda than they are to children donating millions of dollars to these campaigns. 
and our kids are suffering from it. There's no accountability for these kids that aren't learning anything. Uh, the parents need to get more involved, and we could go into all the social issues that uh, are, are, are part of it. But I think one of the biggest contributors to our monopoly is uh, the fact that we've got a government, and I disagree with this totally, a government – Union, which I don't think should be allowed. And just one more last comment. The first commercial I saw of your, co uh, your company, I believe it was a Christmas commercial, and the woman in the white dress was singing. Uh, she was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Sabina was her name. She was the model, the, the actress. Thanks, Gary, for your call tonight. Patrick, your comments, uh, Gary. Well, uh, you know, there's a there's – a, there's an area not far from, well, where, around where Gary lives. There's a state. I don't want to name it because I don't want to get into the, someday we'll, this will be public. But they, uh, the state, we've got to remember that behind the high school you see, see to me it's, it's the, the union is part of the problem. And I think I opened up, I, I may have shown in that speech in New Hampshire, if you go on the National Teachers Union, the NEA, National Education Association website, they have a list of public enemies and you know how much the unions hate, for example, Walmart and stuff? Mm. You know, they hate Walmart. They hate Starbucks. You go to the list of public enemies, Starbucks is three, Walmart's two. I'm number one. Really? Hey, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. We're number one. Yeah. Uh, there's a state in the south where that has about 400 people. It, so behind this school you see. So the union's the problem, uh, is part of the problem. But you got to remember, there's all these layers you don't see. There's the – behind your high school, there's the, the district – center, the county, the state, and the federal, with all these people in it. And in one state, they had like 400 people being, you know, driving around in the, in un, with unlimited gas cars and state cars. As far as we could tell, as far as, and I'm not speaking for the Friedman Foundation, I'm speaking for as I was involved in a school choice movement there, and with the political folks I knew, as far as they could tell, these folks are basically Democratic Party operatives that are just on the state, state school board, the state school system, you know, department. Uh, it's where Graft went to after, you know, this, after it left City Halls to the expense, uh, you know, in the 50s and 60s, it started becoming very common to root it out of City Halls, that sort of open Graft. A lot of it moved into the education system. Marion Barry, the mayor of D.C., turned it to have like a few hundred of his closest friends uh, with job on the payroll of the Department of Education, but with no real function. So there's a huge amount of that sort of pork in it. Yeah, I think that uh, it, it bears mentioning here that I think that there are a great deal of people who are working within the government school system that are trying to make the best of it and trying to teach kids. And they may Absolutely. certainly be part of these unions. There's no doubt about it. And, and I think that they kind of get swept up oftentimes when when we're talking about the uh, the pork that's involved in government schools, the, the, the you know, the, the overspending. They get swept up, too. Hey. And many of them are just vigilantly trying to educate kids. The teachers aren't the problem. The guild is the problem. The teachers, I love the teachers. The mm -hmm. teachers walk on water. Teaching is a sacred thing. Uh, and there are all kinds of really idealistic people trying to help in there. They're not the ones I'm saying are the problem. The guild. But the guild isn't just the union. It's the whole bureaucracy that you don't think about. When you go after it, what do they do? They trot out your local high school teacher and say, oh, this guy doesn't yep. like teachers. I love the teachers. There's all this stuff going on. You know, there's people make two, three hundred thousand dollars a year up the system as administrators over administrators over administrators. Mm -hmm. You give everybody school choice, let people go and buy the education that they want. That's the only way to carve out the fat. You can't carve out fat in a, in a bureaucracy from above. It just replicates itself. You have to bring market forces to bear. Let's go to Bregan in Madison, Wisconsin, listening to the Mike 92.1 WXXM. Hey guys, um, I tuned in a little bit late to the program. I got to say, first of all, that um, I've been listening to your program on uh, Genesis Communications Network for four, five, six years. I can't even remember when I started listening. And I'm so happy that you're on actual local uh, terrestrial radio. That's awesome. So are Thanks. we. We're also and, very uh, happy about that. So go ahead with your <laughs> yeah. go ahead with your comments. <laughs> For Patrick now, uh, the comments would be that I actually have to second that other caller's um, notion uh, of uh, a groundbreaking book called The Dump Deliberate Dumbing Down of America by Charlotte Thompson Iserbeet. It's uh, spelled I-S-E-R-B-Y-T. 
her her uh, father was part of Skull and Bones, and she goes into a bit of that. And I've actually talked to her on the phone many times. My question really is, <clears throat> um, yeah, I've read her book, and I actually have several copies that I've given out to local uh, 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 radio talk show hosts in Madison. And um, it's tough to get through, pretty kind of dry. But when you realize that there's a lot of um, meat there to contend with and a lot of pr- provocative ideas, my question is, are we really dumbing down our kids? Because I think that we are. I know, I think there's no question that we are. And what are we going to do about it? Because it's not just school vouchers versus public system. I think uh, at the end of the day, if you have the money to play, you're going to get your way. So I, 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 my question is, do, if I were to have kids, my, my options are homeschool or what? I like unschooling personally, but uh, thank you, Brigham, for the call tonight. Go ahead, Patrick. Brigham, there's a great alternative. What you do is you go to a voucher program, and a voucher program that works this way. We said we were talking about how they spend sixteen thousand dollars per child. Now, you say to anyone who wants, withdraw your kid, take a voucher for eight thousand. That you have to go, you have to spend it at a school, some pri- of, the, of your choice. That there, you would have blossom into existence a whole bunch of entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, somebody might take in 10 kids, make their living room into a school room for 10 kids, take eight vouchers, or, you know, 10 vouchers for eight, have a nice $80,000 a year income. Of course, we'll have, they'll have some expenses. But imagine the education that some people, think of all the guys, who, you know, folks who come out of the military and retire, and they have this wonderful, you know, they have a lifetime of learning, the wonderful people, they know how to lead and how to re- raise young young kids up, think of all the jobs they could have. Uh, but what you'd be doing, so there is a solution. That's, but to get what, what you're complaining about, Brigham, is that there isn't an alternative. There would be an alternative if you allowed vouchers. There would be a whole spring into existence of those kinds of entrepreneurs. And the good ones, you know, the same thing would happen as happens with restaurants. If somebody's selling a garbage product for a high price, nobody goes there. That's what would happen. And so you would have real educators develop unencumbered by this whole guild that we've been talking about. You know, I've often thought that uh, the the way to go about uh, sort of speeding this along, and I don't disagree with what you say at all, the, the sort of speeding it along is just give the school to the people who work there. You know, give them shares in it like stock and then make them compete in the marketplace after that. You're, you're giving them a huge advantage. They've got the largest school in town, given them for free. Patrick, hang on. We're going to bring you back uh, some more folks with questions here in moments. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. If you've got a question for Patrick Byrne uh, about education, or whatever, uh, he, you know, he can talk Bitcoin too. Eight fifty five, four fifty, free. Going back to the my bags and saying, you cost me a lot of misery, and all total twenty seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite, two pounds, three ounces, and my dog has been cured. Abby's a five year old silky terrier. She had like chicken pox on her belly, clusters of bumps on her back, and she was allergic to like seventy some odd things. So the dermatologist, it was like, oh yeah, just keep giving her needles every ten days, but she's not clearing up. And then I, it came up on my radio, Dynavite. D i n o v i t e. And I was like, oh, that's it, that's it. I give her the Dynavite after five weeks, and one morning there was nothing there, and I'm like, oh, my God, she's all clear. There wasn't one blemish on her body. Her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. She is a healthy, bump-free, pimple-free, shiny, silky. It turned our lives around. So thank you very much for Dynavite. I couldn't be happier. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book 
book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks... Why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Back with more Free Talk Live, it's the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, generally you can bring up anything you want, although right now we're in sort of extended uh, interview mode here with Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock.com, also the chairman of the Friedman Education Foundation for Educational Choice. We've been talking a lot about education with Patrick and taking your calls as well. We're going to continue doing that here in a moment, but I also want to let you know about the Pocket Power Plus. You go to Pocket Power Plus. PocketPowerPlus9.com to get the Pocket Power Plus for half price and use coupon code FTL to save even more. But what is it? Well, it is a breakthrough in portable power technology. And if you've got a smartphone, for instance, or a laptop, you know how inconvenient it can be if you've got a long day on the road or even just your average day uh, going to work. Your phone's probably dead halfway through the day, uh, if you're lucky. If you take a long walk. Yeah, and so you know, if you want to be able to charge your phone without having to plug into the wall, maybe you're you know again on the road or you're you know you're stranded at an airport or something uh, inconvenient like that, uh, the Pocket Power Plus will save your day and several more on top of that. You can use this thing to recharge your phone multiple times. Uh, in fact, it is so powerful that in some circumstances it can actually jumpstart a car. So the amount of power you can get out of this little device that can actually fit in your pocket, they're not joking, uh, is pretty incredible. So you can go to PocketPowerPlus9.com to get it for half price and use coupon code FTL to save even more. Again, that's PocketPowerPlus9.com. It does, by the way, come with a full accessory pack. Uh, which has most of the adapter types that you'll need to you know, charge your laptop, charge your phone. It is an amazing uh, device, and it also even includes the jumper cables. So go and check it out at pocketpowerplus9.com. Don't forget uh, code FTL. We've got Patrick Byrne back with us here. Patrick, thanks for sticking uh, with us here as the calls continue to roll in uh, for you here. My pleasure. Let's go back to the phones and the fun. Carl's in Atlantic City listening to WPG. Hello, Carl. Do we have Carl in Atlantic City? Hanover. 
Hey, go ahead. You're on. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Landing City, New Jersey, the, the cost is $23,000 per student. Whoa! With a 60% graduation rate. God. But here's my question. I'm and then how many of them, the, the numbers out there of, of the ones that graduate, um, they I've seen numbers as high as 20% are functionally illiterate. Mm. Mm. That's graduates. Right. And, and uh, what a shame. I mean, look at, the, look at the loss, uh, the cost of those people into society to let that, to let that situation persist. What, what do you think of the people who think, ah, that's good enough. What are you going to do? You know, the, you know well, the, what I mean? Well, the, the taxpayers aren't happy in Atlantic City, the ones that have to pay for it, I'll tell you that. And the sending districts are even madder. You know, there's some smaller cities, uh, Ventnor, Margate, Brigantine. They're really mad about that $23,000 figure. Well, you know, well, first of all, i got to mention my whole, family, my whole family is from down there, Margate. Wildwood, Wildwood. Oh, really? Place. Yeah, Atlantic City. My my mom, my grand, my dad, my grandparents. Everybody's from there. Uh, yeah, and I bet the twenty three thousand isn't the whole, isn't the whole story. <laughs> you know, they lie about that. They, the, it's the twenty three thousand and sort of very direct visible cost, but they don't count the rent or they don't count the capital on the bonds that bought it or they don't count the contribution to the student to, um, to the teacher pension fund. Those are all costs. Private right. schools have to have buildings too. They have to have teachers and teachers, you know. So uh, they don't really. When you add all that up, it's probably. If I've been to Atlantic City, much more than that. You know, the average in the U.S. is sixteen thousand. Carl, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate it. You know, question real quick, uh, Patrick. Is, is there any data on the average cost per pupil? At private schools, non-government schools. Uh, yeah, it's actually seventy-two hundred dollars, seventy-eight hundred dollars. So the first for a like, fraction. Hit. Yeah. So, so right. but but that's actually skewed. That's a little bit misleading. Okay. Because there's really two kinds of private schools. There are extra, extra, uh, very cheap parochial schools mm-hmm. like that are three uh, thirty-five hundred to five thousand. Right. Um, and then sort of very posh schools, for want of a different word. Milton used to think that that bifurcated market would be cleared up if people can come in with vouchers at say eight thousand. And then some schools will open, some private schools will open that say charge ten, and you got to take your voucher and you got to top it up a little bit. But you know, is that the worst thing in the world for for society? Will that work? Uh, what will happen is a bunch of a bunch of entrepreneurs will spring up at every price bracket at at eight thousand, at ten thousand, at fourteen thousand. And we'll have a much richer – and what will happen is innovation. That's what drives innovation in everything. It's when it's all ossified under a top-down bureaucracy, whether it be the Soviet agricultural system or the U.S. government education system. Uh, there, you don't see innovation. There's no reason for anyone to innovate. Innovation is the enemy. Yeah, it's true. You know, just to go back real briefly uh, to the idea of what can you do, another caller had asked about this, and uh, Carl in New Jersey was saying taxpayers are upset. I mean, taxpayers in a lot of places are upset about the schools, but yet they just keep on cranking forward with li- larger and larger budgets every single year. I mean, no amount of outrage. They'll take your house away right. if you don't pay. Yeah, no, no amount of outrage seems to be stopping the system, and your suggestions are good. Like, the voucher idea, it's a good idea. Uh, but getting to implement that in the you know political reality is a very challenging thing. So my recommendation for parents who want something that they can do today is to get their kids out of the government schools. Don't wait. Uh, you know if you can if you can set up a homeschool or unschooling situation for your kids, I think that personally is the ideal right now. But well, well so voucher programs actually in many for, there's there's something called tuition tax credit, which is a little bit the same thing economically. There's charter schools that step in that direction than tuition tax credits. But pure vouchers, uh, they can be used for homeschooling. They're, depending on how they're designed by state, there's been a lot of success with vouchers. It's in about 23 states. Every year there's another like five or six programs launching up. Uh, many of them support homeschooling. So people can pull their kids out of government schools, but the state is providing uh, a voucher that can be used on education, on buying them online learning, mm. on buying them school supplies and things like that. 
So what I'd like to see is for people that love liberty and who care about educational freedom to consider the Free State Project, if we can get some of those people who are so frustrated with the terrible system that we have to concentrate their efforts in one place, then you know maybe there would be a chance to not only get vouchers, but to roll back some of the government monopoly as it currently stands. Uh, I think that that's all possible if we combine our efforts. We've seen amazing things happen here in New Hampshire already, and the official, uh, you know, the official move for the Free State Project has yet to begin. So I'd like to encourage parents to look into that at freestateproject.org. There's a great movie called The 101 Reasons uh, Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, which you can watch for free over at 101reasonsfilm.com. Let's go to Jonathan in Indiana, listening to WIBC in Indianapolis. Hello, Jonathan. You're on with Patrick Byrne. Hi. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. I appreciate the topic that you're on. Um, my girlfriend is a teacher, actually, at a local school here in Indiana, and she has just informed me recently that the school, one of our local schools here in the city, has a uh, budget overdraw. As of now, they're going to be over a million dollars over budget before the end of this year is out. And the thing that blows my mind about this is in the middle of all their financial crises and everything, they just put thousands of dollars into brand new signs out in front of the school. They didn't improve the schools themselves <laughs> inside. Yeah. The investments were put in to make it look good on the outside. The Somebody's got a friend in a local also- sign company. Hey, hang on, Jonathan. I'll bring you back exactly. here in a moment. Just stand by. We're going to bring you back here. I'll give you a chance to get your question out for Patrick Byrne, who has generously uh, now stayed on 50% longer than originally agreed, and he said he'll keep on until your questions are done. 855 450 free. He's going to give up on that. <laughs> <laughs> hang on. It's Free Talk Live. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Free Talk Live. We have been brought forward to bring out the truth. I knew this was All right, what is the truth? No, it's in the two books. Oh, you've got to buy the books. Now, how much is somebody going to have to pay for these books? It's right online, depending on what country you're in. They're $26 a piece here in the United States, including freight. Now, why would would God put books out and require people to pay for them. What, what's the point in that? I mean, aren't there people out there that you know Those can't afford that? Those of us that? here on Earth have had to put the material together and get it copyrighted and available. Why would God want to copyright something? What's the point of that? I mean, w- wouldn't God want... Anything on this planet has to be copyrighted to be put out legally by That's your not true. Not true at all. Not planet. true, sir. Nope. You can put Would whatever you, you want out there. Explain? No, you let me explain because uh, whatever you want, you can put online and nobody's going to tell you you can't do it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free here. Bring up anything you want later. Right now we're talking about education with uh, Patrick Byrne. He's the CEO of Overstock.com, the chairman of the Friedman Foundation for Educational Choice. And our website, by the way, is freetalklive.com. You can go there and uh, get interactive in a variety of different ways. You can submit content right to the front page of the site. Other listeners can vote it up if they like it, down if they don't. So go and get interactive for free. And there's a bunch more at freetalklive.com. We recently had a wine tasting here. We got some bottles of wine from Cameron Hughes at uh, chwine.com. And I was impressed. This is the what Cameron does is he goes around to the, the top vineyards in Napa Valley and around the world, but most of his business is in California. And he finds these vineyards that make, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 dollar bottle of wine and he'll buy their overstocks. Uh, have you heard of this uh, the, this this pattern before? <laughs> We've got Patrick Byrne of overstock.com on the line. And it, what he'll do is he'll buy their overstocks and then he labels them uh, with his own label and sells them to you at tremendous discounts from between 15 and 30 dollars a bottle of wine. Um, these are, you know, 90 uh, point bottles of wine. They're incredible. And you can get them with an even better offer from chwine.com by clicking the microphone in the upper left-hand corner and using coupon code FTL. We have uh, 20% off of many of their best wines. So it's select wines there, 20% off of their already reduced prices. These prices are up to 70% off and free shipping. Now, free shipping is a big deal when you're talking about shipping liquids. So go to chwine.com and try it. You will not be disappointed. This is th- this wine's great. chwine.com um, and uh, click on the microphone in the upper left-hand corner. Use coupon code FTL. Save 20% off of w- w- select wines there on the website and get free shipping. All right, let's continue here. Patrick Byrne uh, still with us to continue to take your calls and thoughts. So we're going to actually bring Jonathan back on, who uh, was trying to get his thoughts out there, but we ran out of time before the uh, the break. So, Jonathan, go ahead with what you were trying to say to Patrick. All right. Well, say I'm I'm apologize if I was ranting a little bit earlier. That was just one of those situations at the local school that kind of got to me. That fact they're over budget and still spending money like it's going out of style. But, uh, well, let me ask you a question. Well, let me ask you a question, yeah. man. Anyway, what would happen if a private business did that? Oh, they'd have no chance. They'd be sunk in less than a month. There'd be if they projected that they were already a million dollars over their budget, and that's where they were standing at the time. And they went before they invested one in a new sign, let alone uh, the new tech that they put. They did put one or two th- new things in the school. Every student now has access to an iPad, which of course they needed. That you know, how could the poor darlings live without? I'm, I'm, so I'm how is so? What's the lesson? What so? What's the lesson? If a private business, Nothing, if we, we need to keep on going, yeah. But so, the, but if a private business wouldn't be able to do that, uh, how is it that you want to stop the misallocation of resources? Here's an idea: you switch to a voucher program and buy. Every, by people defecting into a world of private businesses doing it, that yep. sort of dis, that sort of behavior will be disciplined out. 
Exactly. And my, my actual question I want to make sure I get to is uh, consolidation was a big issue around my town for schools. They just recently consolidated two of our schools into this one that's now grossly over budget already this year. This is the first year for doing it. Is there any situation in our current system? I've not seen a benefit to consolidating. Is there something no. that is bigger no. going on when they're consolidating? If there are people who just in their nature – think that everything's run better if it's centralized. They would centralize, you know, they would tell the grass which way to bow if they could. Mm -hmm. Everything for them has to be centralized. Milton used to talk about when he was a high school student in America, there were 100,000 school districts. By the time he died, there were about 15,000. There's this constant acceleration. Uh, 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 you know, they, they think that, you know, at the extreme, you have that Soviet car plant that was, you know, Stalin looked at Detroit and said, well, I can do better. And he built some plant that was 20 miles by 20 miles or something. And it turned out wow. that, you know, the trip on. So it's just that the nature that uh, of it's the way we have the institution designed. And again, the way you solve this problem, just like the, the way you get your kids to homeschool or whatever, is you introduce a voucher program. Solves all these complaints that the different callers are having get solved by a voucher program. Many times when you're at the school board meeting or uh, even when it comes to school board elections, uh, you know, the there's in my town, uh, you're from New England, Patrick, uh, you're familiar, the, uh, the the town meeting, they'll also have a uh, school meeting that's uh, where they, they handle the school budget. There's really not an opportunity to just sort of switch the track. It's basically where do you want the deck chairs on the uh, Titanic is what you get to decide. You know, you can't say... I'd like a lifeboat, please. Henry Ford, you can have any color of model to you want so long as it's black. Yeah. Jonathan, you know, thanks for your call exactly. tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's thanks. continue here. We've got Gene. He's in Detroit. Gene, you're on with Patrick Byrne. Hey, thanks, Dr. Byrne. Hey, uh, listen, I've been kind of helping fight uh, here in Michigan the nationalization of education with, through co Common Core. And what I've, we've seen in other states that have vouchers is, is that the schools that take the vouchers have to do common core, uh, the nationalization of education, the national testing. And so, you know, how do we, is, is, is vouchers, are they really kind of a centralization of power if we're not careful? I mean, how do we make sure that, you know, that we, I think you're right with innovation and entrepreneurship, I think maybe just without government money, they can, you know, really go far. So I just wonder how to, how to stop the strings that naturally are attached to government money and, you know, they run out the schools uh, out of business, the schools that won't do, uh, you know, uh, you know, do the strings attached because the kids go to the ones that will take the government money with vouchers. So I just, I mean, I, I think for kids that are stuck in failing schools and violent schools and unsafe schools, they're very important and I applaud the work, but I just wonder what's the, the end game. Well, sir, great question. I have two two answers. One is there's a way to prevent vouchers from then happening as you try to get them to come with the fewest strings attached. But I think that, you know, I can understand that it is, a you know, kind of a strange step or an it's a, it's in people's eyes. And so if you want sort of a modest step, uh, go the, you know, a moderate step would be to say, okay, these vouchers can be spent at private schools, but they are schools. Let's have a little bit of control. And a little bit of control is they have to do, do some nationally recognized test. I don't know if there's still the Iowa test or the California test, or whatever, but some nationally recognized test or Common Core. But they get to pick the test. And they have to publish the aggregate results, obviously not individual results. And that way parents can kind of make an informed decision. And, and schools, just like, you know, we do, a, we, the government does say on cans of pee, peas, there has to be a label that says what's in the can. And so a little bit of disclosure. I think that even I, as a Milton Friedman guy, I can live with that. Ultimately, maybe there'll be a day down the road where you have the same amount that you have with restaurants or something. I don't know. But I, I'm fine with the gover uh, you know, with some small amount of regulation, but the problem is, is with a, when you when you allow some small amount, the government tends to grow. And what's to stop the state from uh, deciding? Oh well, if everybody's taking these vouchers, then the school has to do this, 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 and this, and basically turning these schools that take the vouchers into de facto government schools that are, right. puts us right back where we were. Great question. Great question. There's a second answer. That's part two of the answer is tuition tax credits. Instead of going to vouchers, there are a lot of states, and this, this is passing a lot of places, 
uh, tuition tax credits where it isn't that you pay your taxes and then you get a separate voucher back from the government, but you get to put uh, money that you would otherwise go to pay taxes. Your money can go towards paying for a school and it goes into an account, which gives a, gives a scholarship to your kid. They're called tuition tax credits. And that way the government, the number, money never money runs never, through the government. So there's never any strings. Yeah, well, I think that that would be very helpful. Of course, it, it still it still leaves that one difficulty of uh, uh, single people having to pay for other people's kids to go to school. But it's a it's a huge leap forward. It's a leap forward. All right, so Patrick, I want you to hang on. We're going to do one more segment, uh, and then I'm using my executive privilege to uh, put the show in <laughs> in uh, in regular mode for the final hour. So we're going to do one more segment with Patrick. If you want to get your question in, now would be the time. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Stayed on for twice as long as originally scheduled. Very generous, and thank yep. you for that. And I want to know about uh, the sort of the economies of scale. You said centralization's bad, Patrick, but we know that bigger organizations tend to be able to uh, make sort of uh, have more leverage in, in buying, and I want, uh, want you to answer that. Yeah, you'll have to ask, ask that again when we come back. Mark, more on the way here. 855-450, freeze the toll-free number. It's the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Mark of Free Talk Live, and I want to tell you about a new way to be prepared for emergencies. Not just big emergencies, but little ones too. It's a source of backup power, so small that I can put it in my pocket or the glove box in my car, but it's so powerful that it can actually jumpstart a bus if I need it to. Sounds crazy, but it's not. I'm talking about a breakthrough in portable power technology called the Pocket Power Plus. If you get stranded in an airport, in your car, or you just want to go off the grid for a while, the Pocket Power Plus becomes your own personal mini power plant. Run pretty much any kind of electronic device for hours, even days if you need to. The Pocket Power Plus can also deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power that can jumpstart almost any vehicle, even the coldest winter days. Comes with free jumper cables and an accessory pack. Best part, my listeners can now get Pocket Power Plus for half price by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Use coupon code FTL to save even more. Go to PocketPowerPlus9.com, PocketPowerPlus9.com, coupon code FTL. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. 855-450-3733. And if you've got a question for Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock.com, the chairman of the Friedman Foundation for Educational Choice, now is your chance because he has stuck with us here originally scheduled for an hour. Now, done two of them. So, uh, Patrick, thanks for for sticking around here. Mark, Ian, such a pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. Mark, did you want to throw out your question again real fast before we jump back into yeah, the Yeah, what you had mentioned is, is sort of the um, the inefficiencies of centralization. And I, I certainly agree with you, but I just want to get your take on it. Um, we know that uh, big companies like uh, Walmart have, uh, for instance, leverage in purchasing and that there are their own inherent uh, efficiencies in centralization. Uh, why is it that uh, we in the liberty movement tend to vilify centralization? Well, you know, there's there's pluses and minuses, and centralization allegedly gets you, well, there, you know, let's say the benefit of increased buying power, monopsony. You can extract lower prices out of the suppliers, and to some extent that's true. But uh, centralization means size, and size is bureaucracy, and it's very hard not to get a Dilbert-like environment. That comes with centralization, too. And so you've got to weigh the two against each other. And if you tend to believe, if your instincts about the world are that information is costly to centralize, and it's better to have systems that, that let decisions be, ma- be made on the knowledge frontier where the information already is, so you forego that cost of centralization, that we who have that instinct really want to avoid bureaucracy. And so that's why the ultimate place to push the locus of discretion, the ultimate knowledge frontier, is the individual. So we're going to have a happier society if people get to make their own choices. Well, it sounds kind of obvious when you put it that way. (laughs) But I just said it in econo-speak and in (laughs) human-speak. All right, let's continue here. I think we've got uh, A.W. in Bozeman, Montana. You're on Free Talk Live with Patrick Byrne. Hi, hi, guys. Great show. I, uh, I'm i terrified. I have a five-year-old that's going to go into kindergarten here. I've been YouTubing uh, some of these uh, Common Core things uh, and watching them, and my jaw is just on the floor. I'm like, oh, my God, they, I, I can't believe I'm going to have to put my kid in there. My only other option is to... Uh, put her in the, one of these Christian schools around here, which I don't have a major problem with. I'm not a very may religious not be person, your cup of tea, though. May not be your cup of right. tea, which is for your choice, perfectly fine. Imagine you could get a voucher for $8,000. What do you think would spring up in your neighborhood? Well, that's what I'm hoping. My options are limited here, and well, I have like a few months left before I have to make a choice. I'm just Well, you know what you out. do? Help us get vouchers. That's where, that's how, that's are they, they, if there's a political solution, that's it. But you know, I can't give you any advice beyond that. But it's that. not going to happen in a few months. I mean, political yeah. solutions take years typically right. to uh, to motivate. Well, what about what about reaching out to homeschool groups and see if there you know are ways to facilitate that? Well, I you know I think homeschool groups are great. I was familiar with one in Utah, and they based all their education sort of around the Constitution and stuff. It was brilliant. Yeah, I'm betting there's. A, I mean, you're in Montana there, uh, AW. I'm betting there's a strong homeschool uh, and unschool community there. And you know, if it's if it's an issue of you feeling like you can't be there, you've got to work or whatever. They do have groups where you know, as I understand it, uh, there are people in that community. And Mark, maybe you can speak better to this. That you know, provide places for people to you know, for multiple parents. Many to bring times their they'll be. Parent co-ops, and and I'm for that. And if you feel like that's something you can't do, just remember that education comes from the family. Don't outsource, because this is the biggest problem with, in my opinion, 
institutionalized education, both government and otherwise, is, is that what it does is it takes your responsibility, your, uh, you as the individual. So I'm talking about your, your daughter's, is it five-year-old daughter? Yes. Your daughter's re- personal responsibility for education and outsources it to a person who's standing in front of a classroom. And this is the sing- in my opinion the single biggest damage that's done by education generally is is that you lose sort of the uh, the obligation that you have to educate yourself. And I think this is why kids really hate school is because they're not learning the things they want to learn, they're not being taught the things they want to learn and uh, you know they they feel powerless. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good luck, Aiden. Advice. I'm going I'm to research that a little bit. Yeah, that's a good idea. A.W., thanks for the call. Good luck. Uh, appreciate you. it. Uh, Can I, may I make yeah, a point on please. that, hop on that? So, I, you know, I agree and I understand about the immediacy and A.W.'s a- immediate concerns. My point to all your callers, to the fellow in Montana who's concerned about that or having to go to a Christian school or the, the guy in Atlantic City who's mad at how much it costs and such, all of these problems can be solved through vouchers or tuition tax credits. If you just do that, it solves all the problems that your callers have. Now, I agree it's, it's a political solution. We've got to fight for it. But, you know, we're actually making huge progress. The last four years has been like this breakthrough. It's sweeping. It's sweeping. Something just happened this week in Arkansas. A voucher bill got passed for disabled build. It's all these experimental programs are springing up. Glenn's in Philadelphia. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live with uh, Patrick Byrne. Hello, hello, gentlemen. Well, Patrick, you ought to come back soon. The uh, popularity of your topic on a holiday weekend Saturday night just shows how important it is. <laughs> Thank you, um, Seriously. seriously. It's true. Uh, of course. What do you um, – uh, two questions uh, real quick. What's your take on the frequently made allegation that charter schools are a union-busting technique designed to take uh, bread out of teachers' minds, you know? And then um, a second is – Hold the, hold the second question. Let's go with the first question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'd say there's going to be people who benefit and people who suffer. And I think the better teachers are going to benefit, uh, and the worse teachers are going to have to up their game. Not to but mention you know the what? kids will benefit, too. And, but ultimately, they're not the measure. Stop worrying about the system. Let's start worrying about the kids. That's the measure. Question so what's two. The second right. question? Yeah, I just, I, you know, I just heard it's kind of like going from communism to fascism, you know, where you have uh, corporate you know, people lining their pockets, you know, from profits from the service. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Okay, very good. Very good. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Thanks, Glenn, That's for the call tonight. No, I appreciate I'll, it. Why I'll, is it nonsense? Why is it nonsense? Oh, well, that's nonsense because yeah, you would, entrepreneurs try to figure out how to serve a better product for lower price. That's what always happens. That's why medical care that gets better. That's why all these things get better and have gotten better. The world didn't start off this way. It started off, you know, we were nomads and life stunk. It, when you get when you get markets and entrepreneurship, people compete to offer better and better products, and that's what is missing from the system today. No one has that incentive. If anything, there's an incentive to homogenize and weaken the product. So that's just false. That that's what markets do. Yeah, I mean, if parents get to choose where their money goes, then you know that sort of prevents uh, the, the oligopoly or the you know these big mega corporations from being able to control things with the you know with the blessings of the state because anyone can enter the market and create some sort of little schoolhouse that's uh, independently owned or family owned and operated, right? Yeah, fascism's collusion of big business and government um, is ultimately what it comes down to. Oftentimes, what a it'll... crazy sense of the, even the, the, using the word fascism. Don't forget Mussolini. The, the, Mussolini was a socialist. He was a socialist that created this new form of socialism called fascism or national socialism. So the guy even using the word fascism to, to describe a world where parents and students get to choose for themselves. So yeah. in his world, the world's freer when government mandarins make choices for you. It's, got, it's Orwellian. Frederick is on the line in Flint, Michigan. Frederick, you're on Free Talk Live. Frederick? Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, instead of fascism, how about communitarianism? There's a, a brilliant uh, lady by the name of Robin Eubanks, J.D., out of Atlanta, author of Credentialed to Destroy. Uh, Charlotte Iserbeet, who's from New Hampshire, uh, she authored the book, uh, Del- The Delivered Dummy Down of America, and has a website, DeliveredDummyDown.com. She worked in Reagan's Department of Education, uh, and uh, a fellow by the name of Robert Rose. Frederick, you're going to have to spit uh, this out real fast. you got like 30 seconds. 
Yeah. And so what was the uh, point of the first book? Education. Okay, so it re- Patrick, it really doesn't matter if Common Core, uh, if the standards that are established are established by entities that are dedicated to sabotaging the education system, whether it's public or private, and that's what's been happening, and that's why Charlotte Elizabeth and Robin Eubanks have teamed up. I wish you would, uh, wish you guys would interview them sometime. Okay. 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 It didn't really sound like a question, but uh, thanks for the opinion, uh, Patrick. Any uh, any further thoughts you want to add in? Ah, uh, no. I think I've had <laughs> said my piece. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ian. What do people want to find out more about the uh, the Friedman Foundation for Economic uh, Freedom? Uh, for, for for school choice, go to school it. Choice, just yeah. Google just Google Freedom Foundation uh, Friedman Foundation. Or school choice, we show up at the top of the rank and such. But Friedman Foundation, just Google that, and we'll come. And that's up. as in Milton Friedman, the uh, Nobel Peace Prize or Nobel Prize winning uh, economist. Milton and Rose Friedman, yeah. who passed in uh, in the last decade. And there, if people who don't know it, there's in the dark when the lights almost went out. There was one guy who was fighting for Friedman, for freedom. His name was Milton Friedman, Milton Rose, and uh, and you know. So anyway, Patrick, it's been great having you on yeah, Free Talk so Live, and also folks should check out Overstock.com, where you can spend Bitcoins on all kinds of cool stuff, and I'm sure we will talk to you again in the future. Thanks for being on Free Talk Live tonight. Hour number three still to come. You've got time to get on. Going back to the my and thing, you cost me a lot of misery, and all total, $2,700 in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite, two pounds, three ounces, and my dog has been cured. Abby's a five-year-old silky terrier. She had, like, chicken pox on her belly, clusters of bumps on her back, and she was allergic to like 70 some odd things. So the dermatologist, it was like, oh yeah, just keep giving her needles every 10 days. But she's not clearing up. And then I, it came up on my radio, Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. And I was like, oh, that's it, that's it. I give her the Dynavite after five weeks. And one morning there was nothing there, and I'm like, oh my God, she's all clear. There wasn't one blemish on her body. Her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. She is a healthy, bump-free, pimple-free, shiny, silky, it turned our lives around. So thank you very much for Dynavite. I couldn't be happier. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,202 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $254. Antiwar.com reports continuing his angry railing at the Iran nuclear framework deal, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu demanded more sanctions against Iran to force them to agree to another better deal. Beyond that, Netanyahu demanded that any final deal with Iran on the nation's civilian nuclear program require Iran to publicly and in a clear and unambiguous way endorse Israel's present status. Iran obviously isn't going to do that, both because of their support for Palestinian 
Palestinian statehood and the fact that the nuclear deal has nothing to do with Israel's status as a Jewish-dominated state. The Palestinian question is hugely controversial across the Middle East, and few states in the region would be willing to offer the sort of unqualified endorsement Netanyahu is seeking. Since Israel has threatened Iran on a weekly basis for decades, they are even less inclined towards public support for Israel. That Netanyahu even brought up such a silly demand at this stage reflects both his desire to sabotage the talks by imposing unacceptable demands and an effort to tie the Israeli occupation of Palestine into the situation in hopes of getting the U.S. and other nations back to their usual passivity over that occupation as a tacit condition for getting the Israeli premier to stop griping about Iran. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expressCoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Private Manning, the former soldier convicted of giving classified military documents to WikiLeaks, joined Twitter on Friday. Manning mostly used the social media platform to thank supporters and explain the ability to tweet from prison. Private Manning is currently serving a 35-year sentence at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas for violating the Espionage Act. One of Manning's first tweets said, I'm hoping to stay connected with this account as much as possible, but would rather tweet about more meaningful things than not. Hashtag less is more. Manning has to dictate the tweets over the phone to Fitzgibbon Media, who is managing the Twitter account. Manning also wrote, It will be hard, but I don't want this Twitter feed to be a one-way street slash conversation. Manning also tweeted, Thank you for all your love and support. I hope you will continue to follow me in the future. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports seven San Francisco police officers linked to a scandal over racist and homophobic text messages were suspended with the recommendation they be fired. Chief Greg Sir said on Friday, in all, a department investigation revealed wrongdoing by 14 members of the police department who may be disciplined in various ways from suspension without pay to termination. Sir said in a statement, there is no place in the SFPD for any officer capable of the thinking expressed in these hateful text messages. Messages. Adding, the officers responsible for the reprehensible text should be separated from the SFPD as soon as practical. The fine right-minded men and women of the SFPD that are of the impeccable character required of a guardian expect no less. The offensive text came to light during an FBI investigation of corruption involving Ian Furminger, a former San Francisco police sergeant. Court documents in the Furminger case said that four officers used their phones to text offensive messages. In the text, Furminger used racial epithets, bragged that a relative was a slave auctioneer, and joked about the KKK. Sir said the police department launched an extensive investigation and found eight officers showed such extreme bias, racist and or homophobic content, and such despicable thinking that they were suspended and their cases have been forwarded to the police commissioner with the singular recommendation of termination. The eighth officer involved has already resigned. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. House of Representatives Bill 323, the IHOP should stay open all night so we can get some Pancakes Act. This bill was submitted for immediate review very late last night under the provisions of the National Emergency Legislation Act. Can we turn dim the lights? It's really bright. H.R. 323 here. would, by federal mm -hmm. order, require all IHOP restaurants to, quote, remain open 24 hours effective right this minute even if some manager has to get out of bed and drive down here to start making some pancakes. Well, we stand by the bill. Right. We wrote it, apparently. This bill would also require the federal government pay to build a tram or monorail or whatever connecting yeah. the 
Black Sheep Pub right, on North Capitol Street to all IHOP restaurants in the city. I think we made some illustrations of The bill that. gives the estimated cost of the tram as probably not even that much. You are wasting my time and the time of this Excuse committee. Excuse me, I gotta go. What? <clears throat> Congressman, this committee is go. still in session. You can't... This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype in to username lrn.fm. All you need to do is send a contact request first if you're on Skype. We'll approve it once we notice it come in, and then as soon as you're approved, you can call in any old time that you want to to talk about anything that you want, because that is the point of Free Talk Live. That is the show that we do. It's open phones all the time. Now, of course, we always bring things to the table to discuss with you in studio tonight. You've got Ian here. And Mark. Uh, tonight, actually, it's related story, Mark, uh, to we've been talking about education throughout the night tonight with uh, Patrick Byrne, who was the chairman of the Friedman Foundation for Educational Choice. And there's a story out of Atlanta that hit, I think it was, yeah, it was about, it was earlier this week, that I've never heard anything quite like it. Have you heard about this uh, cheating scandal? In Atlanta, I've heard of uh, I've heard of that, and I've heard of you know situations where teachers and sometimes more than one teacher in a school get caught. But I never heard about it from the teacher side. I mean, when I think about cheating, I think the kids in the class. Like I remember being in school, and I remember kids and myself included cheating uh, in these government school classes. But I never really considered it from the teacher's perspective. The teachers themselves. Uh, would be involved in cheating. I would have thought we would have read stories like that on the air, but uh, perhaps I've just read them. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't recall. I mean, I don't recall ever hearing it. Maybe maybe we have, I and mean, we've been doing the show for well, more than a decade. Absolutely. But. When test scores, um, when, when teachers are rated based on the test scores of their students, you're going to find teachers that find it most expeditious to, to hand out the closest thing to the answers as they can find. The Atlanta or the AP reporting from Atlanta, a group of former Atlanta educators convicted in a test cheating scandal were locked up in jail on Thursday as they await sentences that could send them to prison for years. In one of the nation, wow. yeah, in one of the nation's largest cheating scandals of its kind, the eleven defendants were convicted on Wednesday of racketeering for their roles in a scheme to inflate students' scores in standardized exams. They include teachers, a principal, and other administrators wow. who, who were accused of falsifying test results to collect bonuses or to keep their jobs in the 50,000-student Atlanta public school system. A 12th defendant, a teacher, was acquitted of all of the charges by a jury. The racketeering charges carry up to 20 years in prison. The convicted former educators are set to be sentenced later this month. So, you know, this is a big scandal. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of people involved. I mean, have you ever heard of anything like this? Not this big, no. Yeah, this is huge. And so, you know, the government, of course, 20 years in prison is a pretty serious penalty for this. I mean, that's, you know, some murderers don't spend that long in yeah. prison. Um, you know, this is the government. The government takes real seriously when people try to scam it out of money, right? And so that's essentially what's what's happened here uh, is that these these people were trying to manipulate uh, test scores. We'll learn a little bit more about it here, but uh, you know, they don't like it when you disobey their their system when you try to take advantage uh, of them. Anyway, going on here. The, uh, it's a huge story and absolutely the biggest development in American education law since forever, said University of Georgia law professor Ron Carlson. He continued to say it has to send a message to educators here and broadly across the nation. Playing with student test scores is very, very dangerous business. State investigation found that as far back as 2005, educators fed answers to students or erased and changed answers on tests after they were turned in. Uh-oh. Evidence. That is, whoa, bow boy. Evidence of cheating. How was, do they catch that? That's a good question. I mean, uh, if a teacher goes through with an eraser, I mean, it's, you're, you're forced to use a number two pencil, right? They're very yeah. specific about the number two pencil. And they just go through with an eraser and they change some test scores uh, how, how or t test answers. How would you possibly be able to catch that? Well, right. I mean, you just can't change a few test scores or test answers, right? You've got to be changing these en masse. I mean, this had to be an operation. This had to be done well on multiple occasions to one multiple te tests. Each teacher is incentivized to uh, for their classroom. So 
one teacher could do this, and I suspect it's being done all over the country, mind you. Uh, this is just some getting caught. But this sounds for all the world like some kind of uh, conspiracy. I mean, this is a conspiracy. This is a conspiracy. Yeah. There's multiple people involved in this. And so what it likely happened, I mean, I'm just speculating here, what likely happened is there were some people who found out about it and, uh, and you know, talked, you know, publicly. They went out to some investigator in, in the police department or whoever and reported this. Evidence of cheating was found in uh, 44 schools where with nearly 180 educators involved, teachers who tried to report it were threatened with retaliation. Similar. So there were some people who, you know, went up to the administrative level and they said, hey, you know, I've seen this happening. And then they were threatened into silence. But I imagine somebody went beyond the administrative level at the school to someone who could do something. How about else? This. I mean, if you heard about a teacher that was going to administration uh, and getting threatened, then you wouldn't go to, to the administration. You'd right. go someplace else. Similar cheating scandals have erupted in Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Nevada, and other public school systems around the country in recent years as officials link scores to school funding and staff bonuses and vow to close schools that perform poorly. 35 Atlanta educators in all were indicted in 2013 on charges including racketeering, making false statements, and theft. Many pleaded guilty, and some testified at the trial. Former Atlanta school superintendent Beverly Hall was among those charged, but never went to trial, saying she was too sick. She died a month ago of breast cancer. Hall insisted she was innocent, but educators said she was among higher-ups, pressuring them to inflate student scores, to show gains in achievement, and meet federal benchmarks that would unlock extra funding. So she's retired now? She's dead now. Okay. Well, they probably won't incarcerate her. Over objections from the defendant's attorney, Superior Court Judge Jerry Baxter ordered all but one of those convicted immediately jailed while they await sentencing. They were led out of court in handcuffs. They are all convicted felons as far as I'm concerned, said the judge, later adding, they have made their bed and they are going to lie in it. Now, of course, the really, you know, one of the worst parts about this is now, great, now the taxpayers get to pay to keep these people in prison. On top of what they, you know, I guess they're not paying their salaries, so maybe it's actually savings for the taxpayers. Some of them probably will be paying their pensions. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're going to get a pension if you lose your job due what, to a felony really? conviction. Really? You think that there's some kind of stipulation in their pension about uh, losing? You generally have to uh, stick no, no, around for a certain period of time. You said losing your job, but there's probably some people that were retired in, you know, in Within the meantime. Within this process? Yeah. yeah, that's probably true. Good, good point, Mark. They probably still get their pensions, and of course they're going to just replace these people with other bureaucrats at the schools. So the budgets, of course, will go up for government. They have to, you know, pay new people to take their roles in the schools, and now pay to lock these people in a prison cell. So I don't support what's happening to them. Uh, I, I don't think that putting people in a jail cell is a solution unless they're actually. Oh, I don't know, a threat, like a physical threat to people. I, I feel like the, the right solution here would be yeah. some sort of rec recompense. I don't know what that would be, though. I don't know you know, what that would look like. I mean, who's who's the victim in this case? Besi I mean, I guess you could say the kids have sort of been victimized in a way by a dishonest system. Well, the, the victims the are the people that have to go to a system that is this messed up. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they have to do this in the first place is what the problem is. The, this is the uh, this is the education system itself whipping its people into line because uh, you know they're they're that's trying. That's all they have. Yeah, it's it's all they've got, right? Like this is the system is so messed up. Uh, Patrick Byrne was just on talking about how we sp how the United States spends more money than any country and has, you know, compared to Western uh, Westernized industrial nations, nothing compares. Uh, I think it's number twenty six. So, ugh. yeah, I mean, if we actually had a market based education system or even vouchers, as Patrick was suggesting, that would solve this problem because then parents could send their kids to the school they wanted rather than the school they're forced to send their kids to, uh, rather than this one-size-fits-all government system where there's these crazy, perverse incentives that incentivize cheating. This was coming down from the administrators. They know where their bread is buttered, and they know that if they do, you know, if they manipulate the test scores, then the school gets a greater budget, as opposed to getting a greater budget because you've actually done a better job.
because you've actually impressed the parents with your well, ability to educate. I imagine a lot of these schools say to themselves, "It's not the kids. It's the uh, it's it's not the it's not our school. It's the kids." I mean, ultimately, different, right? If you if you get a certain set of kids and from one neighborhood and a certain set of kids from another neighborhood, you got to leg up if you are in the right neighborhood. Some kids are just going to do better than others because the peop- more successful people tend to cl- flock together. We call them wealthy people. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can share your thoughts here. More on the way on Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least $10,000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all time high. The stage is being set for the re emergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free 
Talk Live. You can join us here toll free, 855 450 free is the number. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. And if, uh, if you're into the idea of protecting your wealth, I recommend gold and silver as a solution against the ravages of inflation. I don't really look at gold and silver as an investment so much as I do. You know, I don't I don't buy them for speculation. I mean, obviously it's nice if they go up over time, but you never know what's going to happen with the price. But generally, it seems like they do go up over time if you look at the, you know, the history of gold and silver. It seems like they've done a good job at keeping people above the rate of uh, of inflation as far as, you know, protecting the value of the money that you've earned. You're earning Federal Reserve notes likely. You can turn that into gold and silver. And in my opinion, I think that does a good job. Um, you know, or you can try speculating and hope to buy low and sell high. Either way, the folks over at Midas Resources can help you. And they've been doing this for a long time at Midas. You can go to silver.freetalklive.com and you can get some select uh, wonderful gold and silver pieces there. They're beautiful. Lots of cool different designs and uh, some old numismatics uh, as well. You can go to silver.freetalklive.com or call Mid- uh, Midas directly toll free at 877-857-9938. That's 877-857-9938. Or again, go to silver.freetalklive.com as we continue here. Our toll free number tonight, by the way, is 855-450-FREE. And we've got uh, Skype as well. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. The judge in the case in uh, Atlanta, where 11 people have now been convicted at trial, one person was found uh, not guilty of all of the charges, but the uh, the other 11 were uh, were found guilty. There are more than 11 who have been uh, who've taken a plea deal, right? So the the 11 people were ones who, as I understood it, went to trial. Uh, So there were more on top of that. In fact, this scandal, this cheating scandal, involves up to 180 different educators in this school system. 44 schools. Evidence of cheating was found in 44 of the schools in Atlanta, which is, by the way, a 50,000 student uh, strong uh, public school system. Now, only 50,000 in Atlanta. They say here. Wow. Now they are looking at 20 years in prison as a result of this. There were almost 5,000 students in my high school. Wow. Hmm. I don't know. That's what the article says, Mark. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm just surprised. Uh, So going on here, the only one allowed to remain free on bail was teacher Shani Robinson because she's expected to give birth soon. Bob Rubin, the attorney for former elementary school principal principal Dana Evans, said she was shocked or he was shocked by the judge's decision. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. And called it unnecessary and vindictive, the decision being well, to put them in jail pending sentencing. Uh, you know, the... Uh, Which isn't unusual, by no, the way. not I mean, unusual. The idea behind that but is to But these aren't prevent- dangerous people either. I think it's the point. But he's the trying to idea make. behind that is to prevent someone from running. If yeah. you if you are facing uh, twenty years in prison, it makes sense to get the hell out of the country. You know, yeah, take, it does. Take your earnings from uh, the government school system. Hopefully, you've saved some of it, and get the hell down to Mexico or somewhere else where they can't reach you. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you know one or two of the eleven people decided to go that route. Well, this is really the conundrum of the whole uh, the school system. I mean, this judge is doing whatever this judge really is supposed to do and can do in this circumstance. He's trying to stop the lawbreakers and send a message to other teachers and blah, 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 all this crap. But as long as you have a system that incentivizes a certain behavior, you're going to have things like this go on. The idea that this is somehow isolated to Atlanta is laughable. Oh, it's not. It no, is. They, they actually say here in the story that there have been similar scandals that have popped up in other major cities yeah, as well. It, but it's not just major cities. It's uh, it's uh, you know it's all over. It, well, that's the it big question. To, it has to be going on all over. If teachers are uh, dis- incentivized, uh, they're they're punished or rewarded based on the test scores of their students, then you're going to find a certain amount of teachers that are going to cheat heavily. You're going to find a lot of te- cheat teachers teachers that will cheat a little bit what we find is that people tend to they, they tend to fudge the numbers just a little generally when they're looking at things for themselves they they tend to be much better um much better um uh, defenders of their own uh position than they are of other people's positions they tend to judge others more harshly and so you're going to find things like this going on oh the problem is is the system that creates yes. 
criminals out of people that just wanted to teach kids. Right. Now, think about this. Uh, there's a really, there's a crazy, in- an extra crazy incentive in here. I mean, you, you've pointed out correctly that if the incentive is that you hi- get higher test scores, you get more money for the school, that's sort of the basic incentive going on here. But also think about the incentive uh, beyond that. Because remember, there were administrators who were pressuring teachers into doing this. So you've just gotten your job as a government school teacher because, like most teachers, I think, you want to help people. You want to teach. Uh, you want to help students learn. This is the reason why I think most people still get into the teaching profession. There may still there may be some people who get into it because it's an easy government you know, job and they get to get a big, you know, sweet government paycheck and a pension. But I truly believe that most of them are in it to to help people. So you've just gotten into this uh, this new classroom environment and then you're just getting settled in and you're starting to meet people. And then later on in the year, you're told that, you know, Mr. Edge, you're just not doing your kids aren't doing good enough. Uh, we're really concerned with uh, the status of the budget here, and uh, you're you're one of the people that we need to talk to here. Look, we've got something that we're doing. We're uh, just quietly adjusting the test scores here. Just, you know, here and there, just go in there, grab the Scantrons, grab your number two pencil, and just start changing some answers. Give your kids, you know, an extra 10% or or whatever it is that uh, that we need to do to make don't this... Don't do it too much, right? To make it'll this, be obvious. Look, look, if you don't participate in this... You're going to feel the, the penalties. Now, I don't know what they're going to do, right? Like, there's got to be something internal that they can do to punish these well, teachers if you, for not doing this. If you have um, five, if you have five percent of teachers that are doing this, then you know the other teachers going to be like, "How come they're getting higher scores? I've got to compete with them." And then you're going to have a larger number doing it, and a larger number, and then pretty soon you've got eighty percent of teachers doing it. But the scary part that I'm trying to point out here is that. Even if the teacher's intention was to do the right thing and just teach, they're now getting pressured by the administrators to cheat. If you don't do this, you could lose your job. We could demote you to teacher's aid or we'll make you the playground monitor or something like that, right? There's, there are things that could be done to these people if they did not participate. Now, does that mean that they shouldn't be liable for their actions and their participation in this? No, I think they're, they're certainly liable. But at the same time, I don't feel like they should go to prison. I think that's ridiculous. Um, but, you know, if, if they tell them, no, I'm not going to do this, then they could feel some sort of penalty for not doing that. And if they further, if they say, well, I'm going to go and report you, then they're going to be penalized for that too. They were being threatened to keep their mouths shut and they were being threatened into participating. So now instead of just going and teaching kids for a living, you're now being forced to participate in, or, you know, it feels like force. You're being coerced to some extent to participate in a cheating ring. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. And the teachers that uh, I thought were the best in school were always the ones that's kind of deviated from the normal way of teaching. Yeah, that's the true. The ones that took some risks. They, uh, you know, they might have you act things out. They might have play games. Whatever it was. Um, sometimes those little songs. I always felt those things were uh, helpful. You know, songs to remember how to, to you know, stuff, rote memory stuff. Uh, those teachers, they can't teach that way anymore. The system has just stopped them from doing that. Share your thoughts here with us. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live's live Saturday show. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. 
from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something facebook.freetalklive.com Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. If you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, you may shop with us over at shop.freetalklive.com. You just enter uh, Amazon through the links you'll find there, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale, uh, which, you know, same great deals you're used to, same free Super Saver shipping, Amazon Prime, same prices. It's the Amazon that you're normally used to shopping in. You're just entering through our affiliate link, so Amazon cuts us a portion of the sale. It's very simple. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. We've got Amazon US, UK, and Canada. Just pick the right Amazon for you and Free Talk Live benefits. So shop.freetalklive.com. This is also a, what uh, using shop.freetalklive.com does, allows us to do is sort of offload much of the risk of doing a radio program that's uh, different than all the other radio programs you're going to hear out there to the listener directly, people who want to hear the show. Uh, Free Talk Live provides uh, services that you don't find with other radio programs. Agree or disagree with us, you can call in and talk about what you want to talk about and take us to task on our opinions. You really can't do that with other radio programs. Secondarily, we bring the ideas of liberty in a way that um, other programs just don't do that. So please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. <laughs> 
All right, let's continue here. Uh, there's a little bit more to the story about this cheating scandal that has blown up in Atlanta. It's not the only one, apparently. It's certainly the first time I've heard of something like this. Uh, dozens and dozens of people. There have been 11 people who are just recently heading to jail, awaiting sentencing on some racketeering charges, which is normally what you, uh, you know, you hear racketeering charges being levied against mobsters and, you know, the organized crime. And essentially that's what they're saying was going on here, that this was an organized criminal activity, that, you know, these teachers and, and administrators were teaming up to game the system, uh, to change test scores in order to get larger budgets from the government so they could spend that or on Or not get smaller budgets. Themselves. Uh, so it's it's pretty crazy, although I have to say I think it's unnecessary to put somebody in prison over this. I mean, they ultimately didn't defraud anyone but their own government agents. Uh, and beyond that, I don't want to have to pay to put somebody in a prison cell who's not actually harming another person. I mean, uh, even with – so I, I don't know who the, the victim is here, and I find it very difficult to figure out who would be getting paid back, perhaps the uh, the taxpayer or something like taxpayer's that. taxpayer's not going to see a dime back. No, it's, the taxpayer never does. Anytime uh, you know, the city or municipality, the county, the state gets money, it doesn't go to the taxpayer, and that's uh, I think it's ludicrous. enough for them but, to be blackballed and to lose pen- – You know, if they could lose their pension over this, they should lose their pension and be blackballed from not being hired again. That should be punishment enough. Even if that was the the case, even if they, they had to be punished, just consider for a second, we had this concept of house arrest that's been around for a long time in our system and is underutilized. Mm-hmm. Really? Why wouldn't you put these people under house arrest? Why? The, when they can pay their own incarceration costs with these uh, you know monthly fees or whatever, at least subsidize their incarceration costs, why would you put them in a system that costs 30 40 in some cases on up to $60,000 a convict. This is the government, the inefficiency of the government uh, educational system washing into the inefficiencies of the government prison system. Let's talk to Rachel listening in Georgetown, South Carolina to WRNN. Hello, Rachel. Hey, how are you? Welcome. You're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um – I, I think that this all boils down to an issue that is pretty common. I think um, a lot of people are not allowing the personal accountability to be on the people that it needs to be on, which is the parents. I mean, I feel like if more parents took an active role in their children's education, you might not have as many administrators and teachers feeling such pressure to falsify, um, you know, these tests and things. I think parents really need to take more responsibility um, and be in the forefront of their children's education. So well, I don't um, disagree with that. I, I think you're absolutely right. Parents are the most powerful person, and the, and the the you know the role you take is what's going to dictate the uh, the place you know the, how your kid's education is going to go, no matter what right. kind of education they have. But let's not forget that the tax that we were just talking to uh, Patrick Byrne, who was saying that it's twenty thousand uh, dollars per student, and that means that the parents or the taxpayers for other people's kids and their own, and so they've feel the pressure to send two parents out to work so therefore they can't sit, keep one parent at home to uh, you know help with education and you know focus on that and that's really important so this is how the system and, and they were all educated in most cases uh, in public school in the first place so they uh, offloaded their responsibility for their own education to the teacher in the front of the room and all these things sort of work together to create a system where the parents aren't involved I do feel like the system does have its faults, but again, when you speak about having two parents, I grew up in a house with four children, one mother, and um, she, even though it was probably very hard for her, she still made time to make sure that she was there to help us with our homework. Now, I'm not saying that the system itself is not perfect, but I do believe a lot of this pressure from the teachers, I mean, to the administrative stems back from the right people not taking responsibility for their children's education. Rachel, so, thank you for um, your call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. I understand where she's coming from, and I think there's no doubt that a parent who's involved in their kid's education is going to result in better education for those kids. But at the same time, to say that 
you know, it's somehow the parents' fault that the teachers needed to cheat. Obviously, they didn't need to cheat. They didn't need to, you know, they should not have felt pressured. The administrator should not have uh, put the pressure on these people uh, to do that. But I understand the premise of where she was coming from. Let's continue here. Robert is in Delaware. You're on Free Talk Live, Robert. Hi. Hi, good evening, guys. Welcome. Go ahead. Um, I, uh, in in uh, my life, I have a chance to, to uh, talk to lots of people that are in the education field. Um, I've got family members and uh, friends. I asked them this very question while this stuff started going on, and they enlightened me. Um, it is a big, big money money making thing from the federal government, um, and apparently, just like a lot of federal programs, the uh, money gets given to uh, a district or an entity, and once the money's there, it's just spent. So there's no money that's going to be given back. Um, there's going to be no money that's going to be um, given in addition to. It's just money that's been stockpiled. Once that money's there, um, the principals don't have to say anything to the teachers. In at least I'm calling from Delaware, this state apparently signed on to um, a race to the top federal fund, federal program, and the teachers are, as you guys were saying, they could be blackballed if they're not participating. If the grades are not good enough, they just plain cannot teach again if the, if the uh, scores aren't high enough in the first place. Mm. So a principal doesn't have to say anything to them. They simply know that if their scores are not high enough, they will lose their job, and they will be stuck. It'll be as if they committed a crime like uh, you know, breaking the innocence of a child or um, robbing a bank at night and you know, losing your job that way. Yeah, and the whole they're, idea they're that for. that somebody's educational success is judged based on a test score, uh, I think, is pretty ridiculous. I mean, that's that's leading it's a towards single test score too. Right, that's leading yeah, towards teachers teaching the year. Yeah, teaching to the it test. Is the one and only test. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I was I was talking about uh, you were just you know, talking about uh, mnemonics and you know how good teachers tend to help you and really uh, can and take the time to help someone learn better. Um, they are. It is totally based off of what they have to cover. Yep. So we just had a really uh, snowy winter here for our state, and snow, drought, whatever causes your uh, your time to dwindle down, I guess, in the classroom. Um, their test is still on a certain day. So mm -hmm. whether they get this uh, children for those that time or whether they don't, they are stuck. They are completely stuck on that end. Now, I think they, at least the younger ones, knew they were going into this. The people I was talking to are people that have been doing this for you know, 20 years or so, and they said you know, 20 years ago this wasn't the case, and no one, no one saw it coming to this extreme level. But um, I think you guys are definitely on the, on the right end of how this is uh, big peer pressure. And then one of them told me this was in a book, um, Freakonomics. Apparently it was published about 10 years ago. Yeah, heard a lot of good things about that, that book. book. Robert, we're short on time, oh, yeah, man. i got to let you go on that one. But I do appreciate hearing from you. Thanks for making the call tonight. Well, we may have time for you. If you dial now at 855-450-FREE, the final segment of the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live is coming up in moments, 855-450-FREE, or join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Well, I did it. I finally left the empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile... I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. 
But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products, most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free. Even here in the remaining moments, we'll do our best to get you in. But if you don't make it on tonight, don't worry. We do it again tomorrow. We're live seven nights a week. 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time, those are our live hours. Whether we're live on your local radio station or not is another question. If we're not live on your local radio station, if you get no free talk live on your radio station at all, call up during the week, talk to the program director, and ask him or her real nice to add some free talk live. And if you are getting some free talk live, but you're not getting us live all seven nights, then you can always call and ask for all seven nights, which, uh, again, we're here every night of the week. You can always grab us online anytime over at freetalklive.com. And if you want to help support the show, then please uh, become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It's all of $5 per month, and you get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only Facebook group, uh, the amp-only podcast, and more. Amp amp.freetalklive.com makes a big difference for us. Plus, there's a, a fundraiser that we've got going on special right now to help us get back on satellite over Africa. Uh, not just Free Talk Live, but also LRN.FM, which is our internet network, which has dozens of liberty-oriented shows. Uh, would like to get that back on satellite, and it's going to cost $22,000 for three years, which, you know, breaks down to a few hundred bucks a month, several hundred dollars per month. Uh, you can help us with that fundraiser. It's an Indiegogo fundraiser. Please go to Africa. LRN.FM and learn more about the fundraiser there. There's a quick four minute long video that you can watch. It'll give you a briefing on why this is important. Uh, it's Africa.LRN.FM as we go right back into your calls and thoughts. John is listening in Indianapolis to WIBC. Hello, John. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Hey. Um, I was thinking about the uh, prison aspect of it, and I wanted to ask you guys um, 
Where, do, in your opinion, do you draw the line on what they would call white-collar crimes? I'm thinking about things like the Enron scandal, because I think that if, uh, and I'm not sure where to draw the line myself, but if you affect a certain number of people, or if it's, uh, you're defrauding a certain dollar amount, doesn't that reach, um, or is even worse than a violent crime, as opposed to, say, knocking off the 7-Eleven for 20 bucks? Well, I would say, and I'd like to have Mark respond to this since he's actually spent some time in prison, Um, but uh, my viewpoint on this is that if you are doing financial crime, that that's certainly a crime. I mean, fraud, there's there's a problem I've got with fraud, and I think that people should not engage in fraud, but I think the proper punishment for fraud is to pay back the victim and then some, right? To pay back what they've lost plus interest on what they've lost for the frustration and the, the lack of the funds and whatever other problems that not having that or being stolen from caused them. Uh, If people knew that when they got caught for a financial crime that they would actually have to pay it back in full plus some, then that might be a greater deterrent than to know that, oh, well, I can just steal all this money and then go sit in a prison cell for a year and then come out and, you know, still have access to the money. I think that that's a a better deterrent uh, than, than prison. But Mark, what do you think? Well, I think prison should um, optimally be used for people who are a danger to society. They are a danger to other people. That would be the reason that we would lock people away. I think you have to have it ultimately as a deterrent for people to uh, to stick by the rules. Like, for instance, if somebody's ordered to pay $10,000 over a course of two years and they don't do that, then, you know, maybe there's some kind of uh, reprimand. And then if they continue not to do it, then, well, you have to have some kind of step up from the fine. Mm -hmm. And government really only has three things as far as punishment goes. It has fines, it has jail, and it has executions. Um, I don't think it should be, I don't think it should even have uh, executions as an option. So essentially it has fines and jails to my mind. But uh, I can understand why people are upset, but that's vengeance is what one's looking for in that circumstance. Vengeance doesn't make society better. It doesn't make the, uh, the, the victim more whole. It doesn't really do anything except sort of uh, placate this Old Testament uh, inner voice we have. John, your thoughts? Um, I would say that um, in some ways... Um uh, co- coercive deterrent is uh, sort of like the old phrase about locks, only keeping honest people honest. Sometimes you're not going to um, uh, deter the determined defrauder uh, from doing these kind of things. Think of identity theft. But I think if you don't have something serious on the books, that uh, it helps perpetuate scandals like this. If people don't think there's going to be serious consequences, sometimes we end up with bigger problems. Well, one of the problems with this scandal that we've been pointing out over and over again, and I'm not saying scandals don't exist in the private marketplace, but this scandal was the government's rules from start to finish. This is a foreseeable outcome with mm. uh, the uh, the whole let's have teachers administer tests and then give funding based on the results of the tests thing that came out, oh, I don't know, a decade and a half ago. But there's been, there have been plenty of studies that show that uh, that more serious punishments don't actually – provide uh, a deterrent effect, at least not in the way that people would like to imagine that they do. And I I happen to agree. I think as long as the person who's been caught for a financial crime is willing to, you know, as part of their sentence, pay the victim back, then they shouldn't have to sit Not just pay them back, but there needs to be some kind of interest and some kind of... That's what I'm saying. That's what I said earlier. I'm sorry if I didn't repeat it again. But, uh, you know, if they sit in a prison cell, that's time that they can't spend at their maximum paying somebody back. If you're if you've got you know some sort of skill that's unique to yourself and that you offer the marketplace uh, that you know that's not being a fraudster but an actual skill then you can make more on the outside of a prison cell than you can hammering out license plates or working as a call center person or whatever these you know in prison jobs might be um, for someone who is not willing to pay back 
then yeah, I think that's when you would would want to bring some kind of an incarceration or uh, you know labor camp situation into uh, into play. But otherwise, as long as somebody's willing to make those payments back to the victim, I don't see any reason to to spend taxpayer dollars to then put that person in jail. So then the person who is victimized is actually getting victimized twice. So they're victimized first by the uh, the th- the thief, and then they're victimized again by being forced by the government to pay for the thief's room and board while they just sit in a jail cell so thanks john for your call tonight i appreciate it let's talk to julia listening in west virginia you're on free talk live hello julia hi hey you're on Um, the air i just had a comment you guys were talking about you know the teachers uh, defrauding the test scores and stuff and um i I kind of agree i don't think jail time i mean i don't know how much they're actually going to get but um i think worse punishment would be if they took away their pensions um definitely and that hurts one of your guys may yeah, I think that would really do it to all, most of them. And I, I was sitting here think, talking about it when you guys were talking about it, thinking about how in most corporations they have a system where people can um, call to the higher higher powers that be, um, call and report things anonymously. And I would think if I was a teacher and somebody, you know, administrator pressured me to do something that I was, thought was unethical, I think I would be looking for you know somebody to you know to tell about it definitely yeah i would want to get evidence of it and uh and i would i would first take it to the highest level of administration possible hopefully you know hoping upon hope that they're not involved in the scandal (laughs) um and then if they and then at that point if that administrator were to threaten me in response i would then go to the media that's uh, that would but be my yeah. move. If you do yeah. go to the media, you know you're going to lose your job. Doesn't matter. Well, I know, I know, but you well, get, but I don't you, know. You might be able to get it back. <laughs> you might be able to get hired back as the administrator when all's said and done. <laughs> it, it, it's it's yeah. a gamble that most people, uh-huh. especially people that are going to take sweet, soft, cushy government jobs, yeah, good point. They are won't not do it. Sort of predisposed to take a risk. Well, We're not talking about find some courage, people. C C C E O S here that are yeah. will, are entrepreneurs. We're talking about people that are taking they got jobs. Know, sure. The the the, the easy road as far as employment goes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I also had a – when uh, your, one of your guys was talking about uh, teaching to the test score or teaching to the test, if you don't think that's happening, it's been happening for years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my kids grew up in um, California, and um, and now we're in West Virginia, and they've, they've been teaching to the test for quite some time. It's how, pretty sad. They're, how they're many not, times in, an, in, in your adult life have you ever had to take a test – in my adult life? Yeah. Uh, well, just after in college. Sc- after school. After college. Um, I don't think I... <laughs> it just doesn't it. happen. <laughs> I take some on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, which superhero it. are you, right? It, it, turns, it, it turns out that I the Disney princess that I am is uh, Anna. <laughs> What's that? Who's Anna? I, I, she's the one from Frozen. Oh, for, I haven't seen yeah. the Frozen she's, yet. She's, I, I think it's, that's her name. She's the one that's uh, so quick to go out and uh, find the boyfriend. I could be yeah. completely wrong here. I'm not really brushed up on my Disney princesses, but it would be really, really funny if I was. <laughs> hey, Julia, thanks for your call tonight. Thanks. I do appreciate thanks, hearing from me. Yeah, so, I mean, look, in the real world, tests don't happen. Uh, you know, when you're on the job and you need an answer and you don't have it in your uh, your brain, you use the tools that are available to you. You go online or you ask the guy in the next cubicle or you, you know, go up the chain and you talk to people and you do what you need to do to get the solution. It's just not the same in the school system. You could knock on the door and say, do you want to build a snowman? Have you seen the movie, Mark? Oh, yeah. Jack has it. Uh, we've seen it multiple times. Would you recommend it? Because, I mean, I've heard a lot oh, about it's it. It's really great. Right. It's, it's, a, it's an awesome movie. Out of time for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. The cold never bothered me anyway. Freestateproject.org. After months of struggling to find their footing, it looks like the GOP has finally found an effective spokesman. Since Republican leaders unveiled the reanimated corpse of Ronald Reagan at a fundraising event last week, the undead former president has quickly emerged as the new face of the Republican Party. Since Reagan was brought back from the grave by GOP leaders in a top-secret $2.2 million reanimation project, poll data shows Reagan with a higher favorability rating than all other high-profile Republicans combined. The voters know Reagan. They trust Reagan. When he moans at them, they're going to listen. And there's questions as to whether he still has capacity for thought, and he does uh, eat people. But big picture, he's the best option they have right now. And appeared in a series of GOP ads promoting the Republican Party's traditional values. Congress and the president say they're trying to help fix our country's economy. 
Ronald Reagan and the Republican Party have the right idea for America's future. This is the Onion News Network. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,202 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $254. Antiwar.com reports continuing his angry railing at the Iran nuclear framework deal, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu demanded more sanctions against Iran to force them to agree to another better deal. Beyond that, Netanyahu demanded that any final deal with Iran on the nation's civilian nuclear program require Iran to publicly and in a clear and unambiguous way endorse Israel's present status. Iran obviously isn't going to do that, both because of their support for Palestinian statehood and the fact that the nuclear deal has nothing to do with Israel's status as a Jewish-dominated state. The Palestinian question is hugely controversial across the Middle East, and few states in the region would be willing to offer the sort of unqualified endorsement Netanyahu is seeking. Since Israel has threatened Iran on a weekly basis for decades, they are even less inclined towards public support for Israel. That Netanyahu even brought up such a silly demand at this stage reflects both his desire to sabotage the talks by imposing unacceptable demands and an effort to tie the Israeli occupation of Palestine into the situation in hopes of getting the U.S. and other nations back to their usual passivity over that occupation as a tacit condition for getting the Israeli premier to stop griping about Iran. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Private Manning, the former soldier convicted of giving classified military documents to WikiLeaks, joined Twitter on Friday. Manning mostly used the social media platform to thank supporters and explain the ability to tweet from prison. Private Manning is currently serving a 35-year sentence at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas for violating the Espionage Act. One of Manning's first tweets said, I'm hoping to stay connected with this account as much as possible, but would rather tweet about more meaningful things than not. Hashtag less is more. Manning has to dictate the tweets over the phone to Fitzgibbon Media, who is managing the Twitter account. Manning also wrote, It will be hard, but I don't want this Twitter feed to be a one-way street slash conversation. Manning also tweeted, Thank you for all your love and support. I hope you will continue to follow me in the future. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports seven San Francisco police officers linked to a scandal over racist and homophobic text messages were suspended with the recommendation they be fired. Chief Greg Sir said on Friday, in all, a department investigation revealed wrongdoing by 14 
14 members of the police department who may be disciplined in various ways from suspension without pay to termination. Sir said in a statement, there is no place in the SFPD for any officer capable of the thinking expressed in these hateful text messages. Adding, the officers responsible for the reprehensible text should be separated from the SFPD as soon as practical. The fine right-minded men and women of the SFPD that are of the impeccable character required of a guardian expect no less. The offensive text came to light during an FBI investigation of corruption involving Ian Furminger, a former San Francisco police sergeant. Court documents in the Furminger case said that four officers used their phones to text offensive messages. In the text, Furminger used racial epithets, bragged that a relative was a slave auctioneer, and joked about the KKK. Sir said the police department launched an extensive investigation and found eight officers showed such extreme bias, racist, and or homophobic content, and such despicable thinking that they were suspended and their cases have been forwarded to the police commissioner with the singular recommendation of termination. The eighth officer involved has already resigned. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Relationship Pro talks to your girlfriend so you don't have to. We're joined today in our demo center by Eric and Pam, a couple that's been teetering on the edge of divorce for years. So, Pam, you guys have been using the controller all morning. I understand it's a very good listener. It's like talking to a fully developed person. It's got to be a major relief not needing your husband to be your partner or a friend. Oh, yeah. So, Eric, it must be a, a tremendous relief to know that there's someone else on the other end of Pam's eye rolls. Oh. Now I can focus on my game instead of worrying about all that stuff she said there. Will the Relationship Pro keep you two together? I think it'll drag this thing out for another couple months. Amazing. Now, to thank you two for coming on the show, we bought you two the new Deluxe Relationship Pro Extreme. This expanded model has two new modes. Fantasy mode, which allows you to select the age and nationality of the controller's voice. Oh, I choose a voice like my dad's. Okay. And a hyper-realistic mode that starts fights and then grovels pathetically when it's afraid you might get rid of it. This is the Onion News Network. <laughs> It's time for Off the Air Live. And here's your host, Cody O'Connor. Hey, everybody. It is Off the Air Live, Saturday edition of the show. That's right. My name's Cody O'Connor. I'm here hanging out with you on a Saturday night, and we're going to have a good show. We don't need no phone lines. It can just be me and you, real intimate and sexual. Picture me naked. Can you do that? It's a very pale experience, but you know what? I think it might just turn you on enough to enjoy the, the next two hours of this show. There's going to be no foreplay. We're going to get right to the meat of this. Meat is my fucking penis inside of your brain. That's right, I said it. I'm going to fuck your brain with thoughts and ideas. Is that exciting for you? Is it? Because that's what's going to happen. That's what all these other shows are basically doing, though, right? They're raping your brain with bad ideas. At least I have good ideas. At least I have that going for me. If you're listening to, like, Rush Limbaugh, you're being raped in the brain with really bad ideas from a very conceited drug addict. This is a man who takes quaaludes and thinks he's a radio personality, and he's going to go on and on about how he's in hour number two, and he's going to do this hour with half of his brain tied behind his back because that's how good he is, and he's going to talk about how liberals are hiding under the fucking bed, and they're coming to get you. Look out. Ooh, the liberals are coming. Ooh, they want social rights or something. They want the they want what happens in the bedroom left alone. They're gonna come get you from the under the bed. They're monsters. They're beasts. That's what Rush Limbaugh is doing. At least I come to you and I'm ready to brain fuck you with ideas that are at least a little bit logical, right? At least, at the very least, that's what I can give you right now. I can give you some very good ideas. And my first idea that I want to start with tonight has to do with bathroom etiquette. Did you think I was going to do a political story? 